Sata Pranda Gata Bala Kosta De Brede Gede Bala Dos Pray With your gaze Upon Jesus Sata Kata Paratos Kade Brede Gede Bala Katos Yata Dem Brata Katos Tala Brede Gede Bala Katos We bless you Shade Barato Kasta Brede Gede Bala Katos Yata Someone build up yourself even on your most holy faith as you pray in the Holy Ghost. Someone is praying. Shegete bata katos kata branda gete bele katos. Tembra kata barut kadila katos branda gete balatos ya. That will be built and established. Built and established in knowledge. Built and established in power. Built and established in wisdom. Hada bragete balakata protokoto palada. Holy Father, we worship you, pray, precious Jesus, our Savior, Holy Spirit, we wait on you, Holy Spirit. We wait on you for fire. For fire. Shadiga de Balaka Tosta Franda Casco de la Hastiata. For fire. My heart is open. Someone is praying. My spirit man is open. Open to receive. Open to be blessed. Open to be changed. Open to be healed. Open to be to, to be delivered. Part of the service. Go ahead and pray. You can hold the hands of someone by your left and right. Abrata kata barata kata prende kete bele kete kusha da bala da ban. Sende prende ke barato skia da bala kato. We are ascending dimensions in the spirit, higher levels of wisdom, higher levels of fire. Abrata kapa raka tos koto pronto koto prende kete bala kato. Sete perete kete bala kato kete prende kete bala do. Kati branko kati la kata bros kati rakos kati brandi kete bala do. 
Ebrakata parata kata prete kete balakata parakus koto prete kete bla. Prete kete bela kato koto prata kata prete kete bela kata. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Prakatos da lagate branda katosia. Men can increase. Men can increase. You can increase in wisdom. You can increase in power. You can increase in grace. Ena makata branda galatos katila katosi pregeti balata. The hearing ear, the seeing eye, the discerning heart, I receive tonight. La branda gata branda ke palata tos koto brando goto barato sia. Few more minutes. The kretika barato skati la gata branda gata balato sia. The panto skata bras ke de balata tos skati branda ke de balata. Chakrata ke de balata te branda ke barato skosi branda ke. Take your eyes away from any distraction. Look to Jesus. Sandi pete kete balaka ta prante kete balaka tu. Kate prata kato sa si kete prante kete balaka tu sa si pras. Im prata tu sa la prante kete bara tu sa si kete bela kete ba. Sebrantos koto pras kete balaka ta branti ke paratos koto prete kete belaketa. Sebrakatos kati branta kata pros kati balaka pros kati krete menekete. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Tonight, go ahead and pray. Give me an encounter, even by your spirit. Someone is praying. Answer questions tonight in the name of Jesus. Give me answers. I came to receive answers from the throne. Send me help from Zion. Release testimonies to my destiny tonight. For someone, your prayer is have mercy upon me. For someone, your prayer is restore me, O oh God. For someone, your prayer is increase me, O oh God. For someone, your prayer is like Jabez, O oh, that Thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. And it says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, He can be everywhere, but He does not manifest everywhere. 
But if you do find that place where the Spirit of the Lord is, He says you will know He is there because there will be liberty. Liberty. And then He says we all, listen carefully, with unveiled face, beholding Him as in a mirror. He says we are changed. We are changed. Everybody here understands a mirror and what it does. If you want to look excellent, if you want to vet whether what you are doing or your, your look is good or bad, you go to the mirror and as you look at the mirror, it gives you the basis to begin to make adjustments. Is that true? Yeah. There may be a few materials on your head or on your cloth you may not easily know until you stand in front of the mirror. When you stand in front of the mirror, you will now begin to make adjustments. So the Bible says, as we behold Him, you know what happens when we behold Him? When we behold Him, we see ourselves as should be, not as it is. So when you look at the mirror, the mirror will reflect something back and tell you you should not be at this level. And then, like you correct yourself, when you're looking at a physical mirror, you begin to adjust. When you look at the mirror, you will see how your finances should be. When you look at the mirror, you see how your spiritual life should be. I'd like you to pray one prayer. Open my eyes to see. Lord, I need to see things as should be. Someone is praying. I'm here to look at that mirror. We've come to draw. Draw, draw, draw from you again. We've come to draw, 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 draw from you again. We've come to draw. Hallelujah. Look up, please. And you see, sometimes the mirror does not only help you to adjust, the mirror also reveals. There can be times that you are looking for something that is even on your shoulder, and you may not know that the other, the stocking is there, and you are searching around. But when you look at the mirror, you can see that it's been closer to you all the while. That I've been searching around, looking from pillar to post. Whereas what I've been looking around is within reach. It's only because I could not look through the mirror. The mirror reveals. Father reveals. It can't, it can't. Listen, you need to pray and say, Father, whatever it is that I've been searching around for, you are too merciful to make me go on that journey. There's something I'm not getting right. Show me. Show me. Someone pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Show me. Let that mirror. Someone is crying unto God. Take the meeting serious. Don't look around. Pray. Show me. Let the mirror reveal. Let the mirror reveal. Let the mirror reveal. Oh, let the mirror reveal. Let the mirror reveal something about my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. They go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. It is important for you to realize that you are changing. You must believe it 
as the revelation that you are changing. It is impossible, very impossible, to be in this kind of atmosphere week in, week out, and remain the same. You may not see it. The same way you may not know what is happening to the seed that is sown in the earth, but something is happening. Hallelujah. Realize that you are changing. The Bible says that we live in this kingdom through food and through words. If you eat physical food alone, you will not live well. You need food and words. Man shall not live by bread alone, he says, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Father, we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. It will not tire me to encourage us to be very intentional and to be very serious about every service, every meeting. By the privilege of God's grace, every meeting is tailor-made by God himself and by the privilege of wisdom to attend to specific areas of our lives. Hallelujah. I can assure you of one thing, as I would always say, you will never come for any service where you will leave and say, my time was wasted. No. Hallelujah. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. You can go to a place that looks like the house of the Lord and return back knowing it was not the house of the Lord. But if it is the house of the Lord, there are many things that must happen there. One of it is enlightenment, growth by the wisdom and the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I want you to pay very close attention to tonight's teaching. Keys to destiny fulfillment. I want to teach and then we'll pray. We'll be praying many times in the course of the teaching, keys to destiny fulfillment. The Lord is going to be answering a lot of questions tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that at the end of this service, someone will walk out of this place rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ. By reason of this teaching, someone's mourning will be turned to dancing. Someone's sorrow will be turned to joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for someone, while you are here listening, may God be where you should have been if you were not here, preparing things for you. In the name of Jesus, and I say it from the depth of my heart, that while you are here listening, it's a matter you are worried and upset about many things. He said, but one thing is needful, and this Mary has chosen. Probably you would have been buying and selling something, doing a few things, and you left all of that. You have chosen that one thing. For some of you, because of this choice, there are things you will not need to do again. God will send men ahead of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. When Saul met with Samuel and received the word of the Lord from Samuel, he didn't need to go back and look for the donkey that was missing. That encounter equaled restoration. The donkey went back home to wait for him there. Number two, he didn't need to go and start searching for bread after that encounter. Supply was in that encounter. As he returned, he found three men holding two loaves of bread. They saluted him and gave it to him. There are people who have been holding many things. They don't know why they've not been able to use it. They are holding it for you. The God has kept them as caretakers. Because the season is coming where God will instruct. And when the Father of Spirit speaks, I assure you, they will release it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For someone here, God will take a harvest, a harvest worth, years worth of harvest and bring to you as a gift. In the name of Jesus Christ. Keys to destiny fulfillment. Write the word destiny down, please. Write the word destiny down. I want to discuss the matter of purpose and destiny as we pray tonight. There are many people today 
who live purposeless, visionless lives, defeated in utter frustration. And many of them will tell you sincerely that it seems like they are looking for something meaning, relevance in their lives. And as I would always say, the only thing you find growing in their life is their age. They do not justify the gift of time and years with anything that is pro-kingdom, with anything that makes for a meaningful life. It's a tragedy. Our world is full of these kinds of people, even our environment. And it ought not to be so. And like I would always say, the bailout, the spiritual bailout system for people's confusion and the tragedies around their life is the ministry of the teaching priest. If people are not enlightened and spiritually oriented to understand the ways of God and then make decisions from that standpoint of knowledge, most people will begin to waste their lives. Even though they may have a semblance of spirituality, they will not really find fulfillment. And it is dangerous. Dr. Miles Monroe would teach us that there is one thing greater than or worse than death. To live without a life of purpose, a life of fulfillment. When you are alive and you are just existing, that your life is not counting, your life is not making any impact at all. Hallelujah. Destiny. Very important word. What is the meaning of this word destiny? Please write. Destiny generally means a predetermined future. When we talk about destiny, we're talking about a predetermined future. Generally speaking, destiny refers to a predetermined future. For the believer, destiny means God's predetermined plan, purpose, and place. God's predetermined plan, God's predetermined purpose, and God's predetermined place for you in His program. God's predetermined plan, God's predetermined purpose, God's predetermined place in His program. So when we talk about destiny, we talk about His plan, His purpose, and His place for you as far as His agenda and his program is concerned. Hallelujah. Now, this word destiny is very important. Others define it as your destination in Christ. Others define it as where you ought to be or where you should be at the end of the span of your life. The summation of everything that you do daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, that culminates to a life of meaning and fulfillment and purpose. There are many people who just enjoy the passage of time and they pass along and never understand the concept of destiny. Nor the keys are located to fulfilling their glorious destiny. Three scriptures very quickly. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. Please write Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Please say an expected end. That means God is not scratching his head right now wondering what to do with you. There is already a blueprint for your life. That is good news. Because regardless where you are and what challenges you have in front of you now, the Bible says there is an expected end. Are we together? Now, for some of you who watch movies, sometimes when you're watching movies, you're kept in suspense, especially if a, mu a movie that is a new release, and you can be watching and you want to, you, you wish that you knew the end, you know, and the suspense, you're, you're being captured in that suspense and you're watching what will happen to this. But when the movie director or the owner of the project, as he sits to watch, interestingly, he will not be as excited as you. As far as, um, he will be excited to see his work blessing you. But he won't be in that kind of suspense. You know why? Because he designed the entire thing from start to finish. 
So while that suspense, your heart is pounding, you are standing, not knowing when you are holding your pillow, and all kinds of reactions, the person is just watching with calmness. You know why? It was the music, the, 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 uh, the, the movie director. God isn't in the panic. Just because you are panicking about your future, don't you think God is joining you in that panic? He's seen the end of it. Are we together? While you are wondering what will become of my life in 2022, what will become of my life in the next 10 years, sometimes we are tempted to think because we are in panic and shouting, God is joining us in that lamentation. Remember, He is called Alpha Omega. He does not just see, He designed the end Himself. It's not like someone designed it and gave him the privilege to see. It is his design. It is his wisdom. And he says here in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. It's important to know that in God's plan for your life, he did not prepare evil, meaning he did not prepare shame, meaning he did not prepare pain. Anything that makes for a, a, an eventual destruction of your life is not part of God's program. An expected end. Second scripture. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Guess what the Bible says. We are his workmanship. Do you know what that means? The tools that he uses for exploits. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in it. Is someone reading? God ordained, he legitimized that you should walk in them. So God is not wondering what to do with my life and your life. God is not hoping that by the time you get your attention, then he gets your attention, then he will now start thinking of what to do. The Bible says that he had already ordained that we should walk in them. The last scripture, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. These are all scriptures that validate scripturally the reality of this concept of destiny. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Lo, I come in the volume of the book, not just in the volume of my wish, my desire, it's been well documented, all that I would come to do. Hallelujah. Everyone, please say after me, say, I was born for a reason. You will think what I'm saying is very simple until... Um, I begin to unveil certain things for you in the course of this discussion. Say it again. I was born for a reason. One more time. Let the devil hear you. Let the altar wanting to fight you hear you. Now, it is dangerous if you were not born for a reason. I was born for a reason. That means I refuse to die just like that. I was born for a reason. Are we together? And then it's important for you to know that you have a destiny. You have a destiny even in Christ. Facts about destiny. I want to give you three very powerful facts. That there are many, many facts to know about destiny. But I have picked three that are very important for our discussion tonight. It is not enough to just know um, generally about destiny you have to understand that there are a few facts these truths represent the foundations for actualizing destiny number one every man was born for a reason every man this is this is the the first fact about destiny you have to understand every man was born for a reason Write this down, please. Still under that point. Your purpose for existence represents the solution you were sent to bring to our world. Your purpose for existence represents the solution the solution you were brought to bring or give to humanity. So every man was born for a reason. 
your purpose for existence is the solution you were born or brought to bring. Very, very powerful. Every man is born for a reason. Every man is born for a reason. You have to know this fact. Romans chapter 8 and verse 30. Romans chapter 8 and verse 30. The Bible says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, is it in your Bible? Them he also called, and whom he called, he also justified, and whom he justified, he also glorified. One more time, prophesy, I was born for a reason. John chapter 18, please, from 37 and 38. John chapter 18. Pilate, this was Jesus before Pontius Pilate. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world. That means I didn't just leave heaven to come and roam around the earth. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world. That I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. 38. Next verse now. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said, I find no fault in him at all. The moment the issue of purpose and destiny came, there was no basis for accusation. For as long as this man was in purpose, he could not find anything against him. For this cause I came. This is the reason why I was born. So fact number one, every man, every man is born for a reason. Your purpose for existence represents your solution that God brought you to give to your world. Fact number two, please. This is very important. Your destiny has been predetermined by God. But it takes your choices and decisions to actualize it or miss out on it. I will take it again. Your destiny has been predetermined by God. It's a very important fact to know that your destiny has been predetermined by God. But it takes your choices and your decisions to actualize it or to miss out in it. Your destiny has been predetermined by God, but it takes your choices and your decisions to actualize it. That means to come into the experience of it or to miss out on it. This is very powerful. Deuteronomy chapter 30, we we'll start from verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 13, the verse of emphasis is verse 19, but let's start from verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. Next verse. In that I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his titles and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply and that the lord thy god shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it 17. but if thy heart shall turn away so that thou will not hear but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them next verse i denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go and possess it. Let's read verse 19 together. Ready? One to read. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Uh -huh. Blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Is that in your Bible? So it is true that your destiny has been preordained, predetermined by God. But it will take your choices and your decisions 
to determine whether you will come into the experience of it or you will lose out on it. This is a very powerful fact about destiny to learn because there are many people who think just being aware that you have a glorious destiny automatically means you will step into it. Fact number three. Very sad but very true. Destiny can be aborted. Fact number three. Destiny can be aborted. You can lose out on, in destiny. It is very possible that you can lose out. We are not talking of delay. We are not talking of distraction. It is very possible that you will not leave out the script of your destiny. Acts chapter 1, please. Very quickly from verse 15. Acts chapter 1 from verse 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of all of them together were 120. Uh-huh. Next verse. Men and brethren, he said, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before, concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. 17. For he was numbered with us and have obtained part of this ministry. Is it in your Bible? He was numbered with us and did what? Obtain parts. That means a portion of impact was given to him. 18. Now, this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. Say choices. Say decisions. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out. Next verse. And it was known to all the dwellers at Jerusalem, in so much that the field is called in the proper tongue, Akeldema, which is to say the field of blood. 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and let his bishopric let another take. Keep that scripture there. Was anybody's name mentioned there? Somebody used the power of choices and decisions to activate that prophecy. There was no name of Judas written there, but somebody used the power of choices and decisions to attract a prophetic word that David said without even knowing what he said. It is written. 21. Wherefore, of these men which have companied with us all the time and all of this and that 22 beginning from the baptism of john unto that same day as he was taken to heaven must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection next verse it says and they appointed two called barsabas joseph called barsabas who was surnamed justus and matthias 24 now and they prayed and said, Thou, O Lord, which knowest the hearts of men, show us which of these two. We're reading to 26. Next verse. That he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas, by transgression, fell. By transgression, not preordination. His losing out on the ministry was not preordination. He used the power of his choices to destroy the potential to be called Apostle Judas. Only God knows what else we would have learned about God from his apostleship. Are we together? Last verse, 26 now. It says, And they gave forth their lot, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Question. Do you see there that Matthias, Matthias was not out of the 12 people Jesus chose. He did not choose Matthias to be the 12. Is that true? Yes. But the people came and said, because someone has created a vacuum in destiny, we must pray and say, Lord, we cannot allow this vacuum be like that. Let someone fill that vacuum. May nobody replace you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The position and the place 
that God has earmarked for you. I'm saying it again. May God not wait and wait and wait and wait and find out that that vacuum is there, destroying others, other people's destinies, wasting that God will have to take someone and replace you. I rebuke that thing from your life in Jesus' name. Nobody will take your bishopric. In the name of Jesus. Can I tell you the truth? There are people on earth today that the assignment they are living today is not the original script for them. They were so faithful in their own, God still added the assignment of unfaithful people and multiplied grace upon their lives. It is true that a man can start, this is the cause of destiny that God prepares for you. But because of your unfaithfulness and unseriousness of another person, do you know that if you do not live out purpose and destiny, everybody whose destiny was connected to you will also have to wait. And God will not punish innocent people because of your refusal to rise. So God will have to look for a willing vessel. And where there is no willing vessel, He will find somebody who is already walking and say, Can I trust you and give you a greater anointing and still measure a thousand cubits for you? Because in these end times, you will see people who are serving tables later become evangelists. And you are wondering what happened. What is the relationship between welfare and the crusade ground? The person was doing his assignment in welfare very well. But the person who should be in that crusade ground was wasting his time. And God said, I cannot delay. I can't punish people like this. I can't allow souls to be dying. Whereas the person with that mantle is not rising. You will see an ordinary person working in the welfare department, just prophetically speaking, carry an anointing that was not in the original script of his life. Every man was born for a reason. Fact number two, your destiny is predetermined by God, but it will take your choices and your decisions to enter into the experience of it or to miss out in it. And sadly, destiny can be aborted. Destiny can be aborted. Keys. Let me give you the keys now. I'm going to give you six of them. Then I will teach on something very, very powerful that I believe is an explanation to many people's seasons in destiny and then we'll pray if god is blessing you already say amen. amen before i continue i'd like you to lay your hands on your head and say lord i'm still available if for any reason something about my life is beginning to make you rethink your confidence about me i am asking oh god that i am still available by your mercy i am still available someone pray i am still available I am still available. I am still available. I still can be trusted. For someone you may be praying and say, Lord, in spite of everything, wasting my time and wasting my years, I am still available. May your mercy still give me a chance to lie. Lord, if you're healing someone in this nation, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're lifting someone in this nation, don't do it without me. Ah. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're raising Someone in this nation Don't do it without me If someone still praying, one minute You are laying your hands on your head And say, Father, nothing will take my place in life I will not stand to watch another person Fulfill my assignment Because of unfaithfulness Because of carelessness I intend to fulfill that which is in the volume of the book for me. Mm. 
Kalegede baratos kata brande gede balahasi. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, please sit down and write. Lend your destiny, your attention now. I want to give you six keys. Really, about seven. Number one. Are you ready? The first key. If you want to fulfill your glorious destiny in Christ, the first non-negotiable key is discovery. You have to discover and find your place. You must find your place and you must be very aware of God's prophetic blueprint for your life. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Let's walk with a few scriptures. Media, let's walk together. Hebrews 10, 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will, O God. So where do you find where it was written concerning you? In the volume of the book. Apostle, where do I find it? It is written concerning you in the volume of the book. If you throw away the book, you've thrown away the revelation of your destiny too. You throw away the book, you throw away the revelation of your destiny. Where do we find our destinies in Christ? It is in the volume of the book. Are we together? Very powerful. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 2. Proverbs 25 and verse 2. Let's read it together. Very powerful scripture. Ready? One to read. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. Everybody says, search out. Mm. That it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search it out. How do I find my destiny? Search it out. You search it out with scripture. This is very powerful. There are three principal channels as revealed from scripture that reveal our place of destiny and purpose in life. There are many but three principles. Number one, the word of God. Like I said, the volume of the book. The word of God. Number two, your abilities and your giftings. Please write it down. Your abilities and your giftings are pointers to your purpose and point us to your destiny, your abilities and your giftings. And can I be sincere with you? Every time you do not connect your gift and your ability to purpose, Satan is going to use it. Everybody you see who Satan is using mightily, it is God's gift in that person Satan is using. It's not like Satan gave the person the gift. Satan found a very effective tool in the life of that person, but not connected to purpose. Generally speaking, you see, anything that is not connected to purpose does not have value in itself. The value of anything is with respect to its connection to purpose and destiny. So, just obtaining things and not connecting them to purpose will only be acquisitions that will lead to futility. It must be connected to purpose. Is someone learning? You find your place in destiny. Number one, from the word of God. You find your place in destiny. Number two, by examining your abilities and your giftings. There's something God has put from within your spirit that should be used. David, your ability to sling and to throw the sling with uncanny mastery is not just a, a hobby. Uh -uh. The, the courage is given you to be able to tear the lion and the bear is not for nothing. Your music acumen, the ability to be able to sing, keep it because one day you will write psalms and hymns and even spiritual songs. Listen, you must make a commitment tonight. That everything God has put within me, I must identify it. It is amazing how that so many people have not taken the time.
to carefully and gratefully search out the many valuable abilities and giftings that God has put within their spirit. Anytime you do not discover your giftings and the things that are valuable within you, you know what Satan will do? He would make you feel less of yourself and you will begin to admire people that you do not even have, who do not even have the, the components of value that is within you. There is nobody who does not have an ability from God. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? Very powerful. One of, our, one of our little ones came the other time. I think I was teaching in school of ministry. And something very interesting happened. The young lady came to me and she came and tapped me and said that they were listening to my message. And she told, my, she told her mother that... Apostle is not pronouncing purpose well. That is purpose, not purpose. I was watching the girl. I said, oh dear. You see now? In my mind, I said, all right, so may God raise her to become a public speaker or become a woman of God. I mean, she's already there. If at that age. So she came and she was trying to, she was trying to correct me to let me know that this is how they pronounce it properly. I said, ah, these are the people who went to school now. Are we together? Let me tell you where most of you buried your giftings. It came because of the tragedy of your foundation. Did you hear what I said? The tragedy of an inaccurate foundation. Some of the giftings that were finding expression, it was the Holy Spirit revealing them to let those around us know that this noise-making ability is not just talkativeness. There is something in it. It's been mismanaged. But this is a baby revealing something. There were children with different abilities that if parents had the discernment to identify. Did you know that it's the awareness of these giftings that should help the parents direct the children eventually on what they should study or become? Unfortunately, many people buried their gifts to be able to honor the desire of parents. And I'm saying this respectfully so. There are people who are wallowing in destiny with certificates and degrees and several qualifications and there is nothing in it that is related to purpose and destiny. Some of the people you see that excel, even academically, in many cases, those people found themselves either by favor or just pure luck. Practicing and studying things that are in sync with the abilities that are within them. So it's like a fish swimming in water. But there are people who are bad, but they've suffocated you in water and say you must stay there. Some of you, the pain of your childhood. Some of you, all kinds of things that have happened to you. Poverty, suffering has buried away potentials. But in the name of Jesus, if Lazarus could come forth, I speak to that dormant gift. I speak to that ability. That man of God, that prophetess, that entrepreneur, that leader, Joseph, that king, that queen. In the name of Jesus, you must come back to life now. You must come back to life now. Please sit down. Only God knows how many authors are dead within you who should write books that will mentor nations. Only God knows how many people, potentials, locked up. Some of us, because of our backgrounds, someone, some person, somewhere, even if well intentioned, Continue to minister to you that you do not have the power to become that which God has designed for you. And you believed it. Some of us, respectfully speaking, the kinds of schools we went to and the teachers around us, they used maybe your academic gradings and they began to call you names that made you to permanently bury your giftings. Can I tell you, your giftings and your abilities. A gentleman, last week I think he was, and I've received so many, I don't know how many of my photos, they do portraits, they do all kinds of things with my photos. And, and I'm so grateful for the people who are thoughtful to have done that. And a gentleman, he came in, I think, from Kaduna State. I was just praying for people here. And then this guy, I think it's almost the size of this, this, this uh, pulpit. 
very beautiful he, he drew it with his hand and I mean you it's, it's about it should be it should be arguably one of the best portraits of myself that I've seen and yet this guy just presented it to me and I said my God and there are many 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 people who will pay millions of naira to someone if they can find a person who does this but you will be surprised almost all the people within that person's family they just know that he's carelessly doing something do you know let me tell you africa we must wake up the 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 spirit that makes us to destroy great visions at infancy i cost that spirit in jesus name hallelujah discovery so number one the word of god helps you to discover your place your purpose your destiny number two your abilities and your giftings inherent abilities write them down know them number three studies one of the most powerful channels and platforms to find your place in destiny is service even service in the house of god there are many people today who may not really know what it is that is within them until service gives them an opportunity to reveal it is someone learning very very important number two let's hurry up what is the second key if you want to actualize destiny are you ready determination don't downplay these keys you are receiving Many have trivialized it to the detriment of their destinies. Determination. You must be determined to succeed. What is determination? Unbendedness in pursuit. That means I am not giving up until I see my destiny become what God showed me in that vision. You may weep, but please don't stop till you look just like him you may cry please don't stop till your life looks like him you may weep please don't stop till your life looks like him you may fall please don't stop till you look just like him determination philippians chapter 3 please and verse 13 unbendedness in pursuit that means you have set your face like a flame 313 philippians brethren i count not myself to have apprehended he says but this one thing i do you know people of purpose and destiny because at every point in their life there is the one thing they are doing people who do too many things they are not just busy bodies sometimes doing too many things is a revelation of purposelessness this one thing i do forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth onto those things which are before i love this next verse it says i press this for me is the definition of determination I press towards the mark. I press towards the mark. I press towards the mark. That means nothing will stop me. If God has said there is an entrepreneur, God has said there is a man of God, God has said there is a worship minister to sing his praises to the nations, then I press towards the mark. Can I tell you? determination requires courage because for the most part of your journey you will be alone don't expect people to believe in you at the infancy of your vision and don't blame them if they don't believe in you it is at the end the vision speaks so for the most part of your journey to purpose and destiny you will walk alone but find comfort that though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i fear no evil for thou not for you people for thou there is just one person you need to verify is he here with me apostle i'm unable to rise because nobody believes in me you are not alone keep moving Apostle, but I think people like you. When did they start liking me? You go and find out. 
there is nobody who they start liking and clapping for at the beginning. Every vision looks like a failure from the beginning. It takes determination. Your determination will force failure to become success. So don't think it is anything special happening to you. Apostle, this ministry is not working. Whose own do you think worked? People forced it to work. Members don't come to my church. <laughs> my brother, you need to have determination by the Spirit of God. All this free lunch mentality is why we don't have champions in the kingdom. A crave for sympathy and endorsement. You must sustain the courage to walk alone. But when you win, I assure you, you will not clap alone. Can I tell you this? There are few people in life who will be around those who are starting. They are called burden bearers. And if you've read your Bible, there are not many. That's why I told you to pray for them. But I'm telling you, you must trust the Holy Spirit as a chief burden bearer. And be sure that if he is there, fire on. Do you know what determination is? If I perish, I perish. Many of us have plan B, plan C, plan to plan Z. You will not be able to go forward that way. Winners are people who don't have plan B. Lord, I've set my hand on this floor and I will press. Determination. Apostle, but they are laughing at me. Most of the people who are laughing at you will be your strongest witnesses when you become great. Because they will say, we saw it. I don't like this man, but I can tell you, I saw him. Can I tell you this? I'm praying tonight that God will take away this chicken heart of fear. Fear of what people will say. What will people say? Take that thing away and you need a lion's heart if you want to be great. Whether you are Jesus or Satan, people will talk. They talk about Jesus, they talk about Satan. Who are you that you, you are in between somewhere? Whether you backslide, whether you maintain your work, they will still talk about you. Listen, we live in a world that is so obsessed with it. It's important to preserve your integrity and all of that. But let me tell you the truth. Don't allow yourself to become a slave to people's opinion. What does God desire for my life? And you fire on. I know God has called me to be a man of God. And someone looks at you and says, Now nah, for you, you preach a sermon and for the first time I slept in church. No problem. Let him mock you. Accept it as a positive challenge. Don't fight everybody. You accept it and move forward and say, No problem. After all, Peter too. They tried to pray for somebody and remember what happened? But the time came, his shadow. Everybody said determination. Can I tell you the truth? Get away from that theology that makes you believe that if God is with you, it is just free lunch all the way. Uh -uh. You've heard, it is a popular saying in the body of Christ and it's been so for many years, that faith does not just make things easy. The assignment of faith is to make things possible, not easy. Whether it is easy or not, provided it becomes possible, that is the assignment of faith. Everybody say determination. Now lay your hands on your head again. Don't be tired this night or you are praying. Father, I obtain grace. This fear factor. Oh God, take it out of my life. Give me the heart of a lion. In the name of Jesus. Who said you cannot build a house? In the name of Jesus. Who said you cannot move from a tenant to a landlord? In the name of Jesus. Who said it is in your destiny to suffer for the rest of your life? Who said you cannot rise to the highest peak in your career? Who said you cannot become a man of God with resolve? Don't let your lack of determination cooperate with naysayers. You need determination. Will you fail? Yes, sir. How many times? As many as your destiny will require. But you have to obtain grace. God is speaking to someone tonight. Shake off that limitation. Shake off the excuses. I obtain grace to be determined. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Go and ask any great man you know today, whether in the secular, whether in ministry, if they are honest enough 
and they don't want to lie or just flatter you. They will tell you, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Many of us are too fearful to do anything significant. You've been in this Abuja. I know we're talking destiny, but let it adds up to all of these things. You've been in this Abuja 10 years, 20 years. You've not had the courage to go out and even go and look where a plot of land is. And you laugh at yourself and say, no, 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 no. Let me tell you, if you don't take that step of courage, I'm sorry to say, I don't mean to insult you, but you will die a tenant. Believe me, it takes courage. The signs follow. They don't go before. Most of you who are waiting for things to work, there are times you have to close your eyes and walk on that water. So what if you fall? Jesus is there. He will take responsibility for your obeying Him. Everybody say determination. There are many people who come to me for prayer. And most times, and lovingly speaking, I look at these people and they expect some magic to happen just because the apostle is praying. Many of you, your dreams have been in notebooks for decades and you have left it there. And to your shock, you will watch somebody leaving it out and you will be angry. And say, ah, is this not the thing? Because it's not only you that saw it. When the spirit of revelation was distributing those things, is first confessed her. But I saw this business idea. What did you do about it? Someone saw it and got up and said, Listen, I don't have a father, mother, but I have the Lord Jesus, and let's go. Determination. Let me tell you something, believers. And I, we men of God must take responsibility for proposing that kind of message. We have taught a, there is a dimension of the teaching of faith. And the ministry of the Holy Spirit that needs to be balanced when you are teaching people about achievement. Because of the excellency of the personality of the Holy Spirit and, and the, the, it, how, how powerful the law of faith is. We make it look as if the moment you take a step and you are determined, if you do fail, it is because God is not with you. Let me tell you this, even if an angel appears before you, and says, I have ordained you to be a real estate champion in Abuja. Receive the grace. You can fall down and roll under the anointing and get up. And your first deal can be, because there are many things you don't know. Your first deal can even be a scam. And yet you go to God in prayer. And God says, I, I don't even know what you are talking about. All I know is that what I said is still what I've said. Many believers have this superstitious belief. That just because you fail, people will come and say, this business, did you really hear God? And you go back in shame, and you go back in regret. There is difference between failure as an event and failure as a person. He says, rejoice not over me, my enemies. It is true that Jesus died, but for how many days did he die? Don't talk about the dead Jesus when he's already back to life. Imagine that Jesus rose up from the grave and sat there inside the, inside the tomb. And says, I'm angry because everybody ran away from me. You better come and carry me out of this place. I don't know how many days we would have been counting for redemption. As soon as he came back to life, he had no time. The Bible said he rolled the grave clothes and he had, he had what to do. He didn't see the disciples and say, you guys, three days I saw Father was in that tomb alone. He had no time for that discussion. Let me tell you this. Determine people... Don't weep for too long. If they go through something, they can stand, learn from it, readjust, and fire on. Determined people are those that if one door closes, they force another door to open. Listen, don't just, don't just be excited for nothing. This is what it takes to be a champion in the kingdom. Determination. Apostle, right now, I'm in school. I don't have a father. I don't have a mother. Where will my school fees go from? Just read your book. Start from there. Read your book. If you don't read and the school fees comes two weeks to the exam, you will still fail. Even though the miracle has come. Do the part you can do. And leave God to do what you cannot do.
God will not do what you can do. I don't have the money to buy the land. But do you know where the land is? That one does not require money. Is God challenging you? Apostle, I'm just waiting. I don't know who will give me money. Oh, let me build my church. <laughs> who will give you money? Do you need money to fast? Do you need money to pray? Do you need money to call upon the name of the Lord? Do you need money to carry fire? Start from there. Leave the issue of bills. Start from there. Solve fire first. The fire problem. Then the bill problem will be solved. Number three. Is God speaking to someone? So that, respectfully speaking, some of this wrong understanding we have about destiny, that just because you are in Christ, you will just be a bed of roses. It's why many, many believers are failures. We pray in tongues, but we still fail. And let me tell you, when you see somebody in a season of pain and failure, don't be too quick to point hands and laugh at the person and say you didn't hear God. Even if the person did not hear God, he honorably fell. In that pain, God will come in his mercy and visit the person. Number three. Who is learning tonight? So the first is discovery. The second is determination. The third, are you ready? Go for knowledge. Get wisdom. You want to actualize destiny? Thank God for discovery. Thank God for the determination, the willingness to press in spite of. But you need knowledge. Destiny is knowledge driven. Destiny is knowledge driven. Oh, this is very important. This is very important. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Three scriptures quickly. Please give it to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ready? Please read. One to read. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no path to the city. It is painful to see your destiny and yet not know the requisite level of knowledge. Every result I have taught you in the kingdom, every pathway you need to take, there is a requisite level of knowledge, wisdom that it takes for you to actualize it. Now let me tell you the truth. It is in this area of accessing knowledge that men are separated from boys. Because knowledge is not a gift. You buy the truth. It will cost you. We live in a world where we are obsessed with gifts. Give it to me. Make it happen. Why don't you write all the points for my destiny and come and spoon, feed me with it. Unfortunately, it does not work like that. Everybody say, buy the truth. You must go for knowledge. Very, very important. Proverbs chapter 24, please, from verse 3 and 4. Still on the third point. Go for knowledge. Get wisdom. The Bible says through wisdom. Please give us Amplified. I love the rendition of Amplified of this very scripture. Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. Look up, please. It says through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built, and by understanding it is established on a sound and a good foundation. Next verse. Through knowledge and by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Somebody say knowledge. Say understanding. Say wisdom. The major, the major activity during the preparatory phase of your destiny will be this right there. Getting wisdom. Getting knowledge. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. 
Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Can I tell you this? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1, it says, Through desire, a man, having separated himself, that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. You need to go for knowledge. Buy books before shoes. Get knowledge before you start getting the adorning of clothes. It is painful to look great and yet be empty. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we live in a world today that does not mind. People can be as empty as a keg and yet you decorate it and it looks so full. I rather look I rather look, carry a physical fashion that makes you underestimate me and then be full and rich within than to look so successful and visionary and then when you come in, you find out that it's an empty gong. Someone shout, God forbid. Can I tell you this? You need to invest in knowledge. You don't invest in knowledge in a hurry. You need to sit down. What does it take, O oh God? You are giving me a global ministry as a man of God. A global prophetic ministry. A global pastoral ministry. Yes, Lord, I have received it. But a global ministry comes with a global burden. I need wisdom, spirituality, leadership, organization, finances. I need to understand this. I obtain grace. When others are snoring and sleeping away their destiny, you are awake. Lord, I obtain grace. Your eyes are sleepy. It looks like two people are sitting on your eyes. You shake it away and say, no way. I'm going far. I obtain grace. May the spirit of laziness be far from us. In the name of Jesus, may the spirit, the destiny destroying spirit of laziness may it be far from us. There are many people who will tell you they want to be preachers. They don't even read up to one hour per week. I'm telling you sincerely, even if there are no demons, you will still fail. Because demons are not the only... Demons only account for about 30% or so of real failure. A major part of failure is ignorance or insufficient knowledge. I've taught you here, if you scored 35%, you didn't get zero, and yet you still failed. Is that true? If the cut of mark is 50 and you get 48, you didn't get zero, but you will still stand at the same place with those who got zero. Take away shame from your life by investing in knowledge. It is not good to look dull and be dull. Now, I'm not saying this mocking you. Knowledge is a, it's an equalizer. You may not come from a privileged family, I agree. You may not have a personal that is very inviting and you know, but let knowledge equalize you. It's a bailout system. Take away shame from your life and stop all the petty jealousy and sit down. Go for knowledge. I don't speak English very well, I agree. I may not be as beautiful or handsome as people would want to be. I may not be like that celebrity. But the one God gave you, your brain is healthy. Use it. In the name of Jesus, sit down. Buy books. Don't go online just browsing profitless things that will not. I've told you this thing. And I've said it with, with the sincere heart of a shepherd. Not to pry into your privacy. I am telling you, most people, the time, if they take half the time they use, roaming around social media in a profitless way and invest it in constructive knowledge, I assure you by God, they will not remain at that level. Some of you know what is happening in everybody's life except your own destiny. That should not be. Are we together? Say, I receive grace to go for knowledge. 
Apostle, but what do I learn about? You see, when you know where you are going, you now find out those who are going that direction and you begin to study their mindsets and study the first kind of knowledge you need is the awareness of your current state. That itself is a miracle. Do you know that if you, if you are aware that you are in need, that knowledge of your inadequacy is already a miracle. Are we together? Not knowing that you have a problem is a serious problem itself. Follow them who through faith and patience. What did they study? God has called you to be a kingdom financier. You can be jumping till rapture happens and you miss out your assignment and even miss rapture if you are not careful. And yet you, they, you, you know, we talk is cheap. I, I'm saying this with, with, with uh, I, hope, I hope I'm not, um, I hope we're still friends. Please sit down. Please sit down. Go back home. And sit down. Carry your Bible and look for one book. Apostle, I'm in ministry. What book should I get? Even if you don't know, at least go to a bookstore. Just roam around there and see. Holy Ghost, I'm now here. I left my house and the Holy Spirit will take you somewhere. I don't have money, oh, at least search. Nobody will query you for searching around. And somebody will come and say, you look like a determined young man. You are looking at that book. It's a nice book. I read it. Pick it up. You'll get both a relationship and favor because you took a step. Go for knowledge. Till today, I study like I don't know anything. Because truly, without flattery, with respect to where God is taking me, there are many things I do not know. And so I sit down and I study, I study, I study. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Is that in your Bible? A workman. Please, let me tell you this. If you are a man of God, I submit to you with all due respect. Forget about you. Be ready for empty pews if you are not rich in knowledge. The generation, the world we live in today is a world of serious people. A man will not carry his wife and children and their destiny and come and be part of your vision and sit down every week to listen to nonsense. No. People love you but they love their destinies. Nobody is ready to waste his time like that. To travel from one nation to come. And let me also challenge everyone, career people, please, in the name of Jesus, go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. Find out what you don't know about. And find out how to learn from it. Don't make the same mistake two times. Apostle, I'm broke. Do you know how to be rich? Eh, listen to one message like that. Is it fair that you just carelessly listen to a 20-minute message and actually believe you should be a millionaire from it? Whereas people, people who have been working even in the civil service for 30 years are still struggling to stand. And you just cheapen life like that. No. There are many of us who do not know the real cost of being great. We have downplayed the cost of greatness and reduced it just because of things like favor. Don't forget, by the grace of God, the person talking to you, I understand favor. Wave laziness goodbye and force it to wave you back. That you, you stand in the name of Jesus, some of you from this night. Gather, if I come to your house, I don't, don't show me the cars and the houses, those things are transitory. Let me see what you're doing with your mind. Let me see, let, you can be in that one room with that trouser that is as cheap as whatever, with people laughing at you, don't worry, show me what you are doing. And I can tell you where you are going. There are many, many young people in our nation who are not going anywhere. They believe that destiny will just open up because of a bold face. It takes more than that. It takes capacity. Everybody say knowledge. Everybody say wisdom. 
And can I tell you this? In pursuit of destiny, if God ever by any means makes the job easier for you by granting you access to the minds of those who know what they are saying, please don't trivialize it. Listen. Don't sit down with a champion and be tampering the equation. You are not there yet. You don't have the results. You see, for some people, it is not the absence of helpers or knowledge. It is sheer pride. Africa, for instance. You find people who have no result. They are broke. They are poor. They are oppressed. They have no anointing. They have no influence. Yet they want to teach you on everything pertaining influence, anointing, prosperity. Let's respect results. Are we together? When I sit in the presence of people who have what I do not have, I don't argue. Even if I don't entirely agree, I have to honor the presence of the results that is before me and listen. Number, number four. Are you ready? The fourth key. Spend time praying for your life and your destiny. That is the fourth key. You want to actualize destiny you must spend time, invest time, in fact, that's the word. Invest time praying for your life and your destiny. Oh, may God help you believe this thing I'm teaching. In the name of Jesus Christ, you must spend time praying for your life. It's good to intercede. I've taught you on intercession. It's good to pray for people. But there are times you have to honestly zoom the attention on you and your destiny and invest time, generate energy, praying for your life and praying for your destiny. Apostle, but I thought you were praying for me. I will continue to pray for you as a man of God. But even Jesus is praying for you. Even for those who are suffering, he's interceding for them too. If you don't take responsibility over your destiny and pray till you tear off the gates. Listen, especially for those of you, if you come from a background where you know that you are the first to do what you are about to do, you are the one who breaks the iron gate. You better pray. You better pray. Grandfather tried it and died. Grandmother tried it and died. Siblings tried it and died. Now you are the one. That iron gate has never been broken. You must pray. The one who is grandfather or grandmother at least open part of the gate. It's just for him to finish opening it. That one's life is easier. For you there is a chain on it and there is a spirit holding the chain. Lord I will not fail in life. Days become weeks. Weeks become months. What are you doing? I am praying. You are just lazying around. Don't call prayer lazying around. There is vision and purpose connected to it. Somebody say, I will pray. One more time, say, I will pray. Matthew chapter 4, please, from verse 1. This is Jesus preparing to begin his ministry. Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, the Bible says. Next verse. When he had what? fasted 40 days and 40 nights you would think that because he was jesus he had already listen look at jesus he discovered already his place he was determined to fulfill it he had spent time getting knowledge from age 12 he was in the temple and you would think just because he had acquired knowledge it was over the bible says he prayed and fasted 40 days and 40 nights and not even hunger stopped him. I don't know any great man. I may be wrong. I'm learning too. But I don't know any great man. Especially in the kingdom. And in ministry. Who cannot point seasons of his life. Where he fasted the kind of fast. That even the devil will look with shock. And say. Ah this person you have energy. Oh. And it's easier to fast when you have not made it yet. That's why it's good to... Because all the distractions are less. How much do you have that temptation will come? You, you focus and fast. Yes, sir. 
Whether you fasted or not, you were not even going to eat very well after all. So you, you used the opportunity. You are praying, giving yourself an excuse. Are we together? Mark chapter 1, please. Mark chapter 1, from verse 35. Mark chapter 1, 35. This was Jesus after a busy day. He had started ministry. So we see him praying even before ministry would start. Now ministry started already and he was doing so well. Morning till night, busy schedules. And the Bible says in the morning, rising up a great while. Everybody say discipline. Hmm. He went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. There prayed. You must pray. There are forces that will try to fight you from starting. If they cannot succeed, they will be waiting for you at the gate of honor so that they will bring you shame. Don't you think because you started, the devil will fold his arms? The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. Every great man here, listen, let me tell you. If you think because you are great and everything is working, everything is fine, think again. Go and ask, there is a skill that maintains greatness. One of it is the consistent fortification of yourself with prayer. People are praying for you, but you must pray for yourself. Because when Satan sees that you are high up there, he will begin to scheme things to make sure. Because he knows that in your coming down is the coming down of many. So instead of attacking two million people, he will attack you. There are battles that you have no business fighting, but when you become great, it's a battle that must involve you. Please obtain grace to pray. Everybody say, I will pray. Apostle, thank God, me, I'm not in ministry, I'm just in business. Pray more. The king of Tyre is sitting where you are there. That is his headquarters. Have you heard about Tyre and Sidon? Tyre and Sidon. You must pray. The devil will not commit millions and billions to your hands when he knows that your heart is already inclined to the kingdom. Go and ask people who practice occultism. Before they become wealthy, they come under all kinds of oaths. Oaths with blood, incisions to say, listen, these are the do's and don'ts as far as using this money is concerned. You can, there are wealthy people today who cannot give you more than 10,000. They are not greedy. It is based on the oath that brought that wealth. To the point that even their physical parents or siblings can be in the hospital, deathbed, but they are not allowed to bring that money. You think they are greedy. It is the condition that was given to them. That's why the Bible says the blessing of the Lord make it rich and has no sorrow. Are we together? Spend time praying. First Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. From verse 1 and 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. From verse 1 and 2. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Verse 2. And that we be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith do not assume that just because everybody is laughing at or laughing with you they mean you well this is a world that is full of wickedness the bible says this world is a habitation of cruelty are we together why must this family be rising why must this man of God be rising? Why must this sister be rising? Why must this politician be rising? Why must this career person be rising? Look at Jesus, innocently bringing glory to the Father. And a few people came together and said, look, we have to do something about this man. He's stealing our show. Oh, but prayer is powerful. You can get into that control room and begin to make things. He said, hast thou commanded thy morning? Please obtain grace to pray for your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Invest time praying. 
Invest time praying. Invest time praying. Don't pray out of fear. Pray as a, not just as a principle of survival, but your prayer will give room for you to keep making progress. Number five. Are you ready? Is God helping us tonight? Let's hurry up. Number five. Embrace a life of competence and excellence. Point number five. You want to actualize destiny? You must embrace a life of competence and excellence. Three scriptures very quickly. Proverbs 22, 29, popular scripture. Embrace a life of competence and excellence. It says, seest thou a man diligent in his business, leaves you with an assurance, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before average, ordinary, or mean men. You want to rise beyond the average in life and destiny for the sake of the kingdom? You must be diligent. A diligent preacher will be a great preacher. A diligent businessman will be a great businessman. A diligent politician will be a great politician. Everybody say competence. What is competence? Mastery. We just finished a series on striving for mastery. Listen to it again. You must become a master at something. Otherwise, shame and reproach will always be within the corridor of your destiny. Make up your mind that you are not given the assignment of being and knowing everything. But as far as the things that pertain to the area of your call and destiny is concerned, please hold it with mastery and take away shame from your life. Genesis chapter 41. We'll jump the verses because of time. Give us verse 14. And then we'll jump to 29. Down to 33. And then 37. We're jumping. We're examining the life of Joseph. Ready? 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he saved himself and changed his raiment. And came unto Pharaoh. To 29 now. 29 to 33. Behold, there come seven years of plenty. He's interpreting the king's dream now. Throughout all the land of Egypt. We're reading to 33. Uh -huh. Next verse. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. 31. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. Two more verses. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice, it is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. The last verse, and then we'll jump to 37. Now, therefore, look at him bringing a solution now. Let Pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. Next verse. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Next verse. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. That we will search and search and honestly come to the conclusion that you are truly exceptional. That we will say your kind is rare in the name of Jesus Christ. Next verse, please. And Pharaoh, okay, thou shalt be over my house. And according unto my word shall all my people be ruled. Look at instant honor that came because of competence and excellence. It says, only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Next verse. We are reading to 46. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand. And put it upon Joseph's hand. And arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. And put a gold chain about his neck. 
and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and made him ruler over all the land of Egypt three more verses and Pharaoh said to Joseph I am Pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt look at this and Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zavnath Pania and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Last verse. And Joseph was how old? Wow. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before the king of Egypt. When they put the ring when joseph began to do exploits at a national level he was 30 years old that means there is no excuse and for those of you who are saying ah 30 years okay that's old what of joash who was king at age eight josiah king at age nine they were all kings as small as they were a child is not just a child in age. A child is a child in knowledge. Are we together now? Yes. You must embrace a life of competence and excellence. Two more. Number six. Am I right on that? Number six. Be disciplined and focused. This is a big one. I can spend the entire night dealing with this issue of discipline and focus. There is no glorious destiny for any man and any woman that will compromise on the power of discipline and focus. Isaiah chapter 50, please. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7. Let's hurry up media. 50 and verse 7, Isaiah. For the Lord will help me, therefore I shall not be confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. It says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. He's given an impression that if you make up your mind that you are a soldier, then you have to adopt the, the discipline of a military man. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing also that we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, say lay aside, every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us, and to run with patience the race that is set before us. There are two things he says to lay aside, sin and weight. You can lay aside sin and not lay aside weight. Weight is anything that is unnecessary as far as the journey is concerned. There are many good things in your life you must be able to cut away from. You don't have to cut away from evil things alone. There are many good things that are not profitable for your destiny. Are we together? Yes, sir. There are many good things you are going to have to say no to for the sake of where you are going. Many good things that you will have to say no to. Number seven, and that will lead me into a very important subtopic, and then we'll pray. Are you ready? The seventh point, if you want to actualize destiny, you must develop endurance. You must develop endurance. I will define for you what endurance is. You must develop endurance. Are you ready? I define endurance as the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus. Endurance, the ability to stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus. Endurance, the ability to 
stand and survive pain and pressure while maintaining focus. This one key here, dear people of God, if you have six over seven and this is the key you failed, you will still abort destiny. Strangely, endurance. James chapter 1. James chapter 1 from verse 2 and 3. James chapter 1 from verse 2 and 3. My brethren, he says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, verse 3, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. In fact, let's read verse 4. It says, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Everybody say endurance. There are two reasons I have seen why people generally, in spite of the fact that they work in keeping with these other keys, while they are unable to really maximize destiny, and become all that God has ordained them to be. Number one is excuses. They will always give excuses. And you see, to one who is determined to find a reason not to rise, you will always find one. Excuses. And then number two, the second reason is violating the law of process. I want to end my teaching tonight by teaching us something about the law of process. Please, open up your heart and open your spirit. Because for some of you, this will be an answer right now to your prayer. Are you ready to pray one more time? Lord, open my eyes yet again. Open my eyes for the sake of my destiny, for the sake of all those who are looking up to me. Make sure you are praying. Those following online, Azaria family and those connecting across the globe, make sure your heart is open. Pray, let it be from the depth of your heart. Open my eyes. Hallelujah. Write this down as a subtopic, the law of process. I need to teach you this very quickly. Mark chapter 4, please. Mark chapter 4. Many great people from verse 26 have aborted destiny because they do not understand this mystery of the kingdom called process. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Next verse, next verse, media, let's work together. And should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. 28 now. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. But how does it happen? First, the blade. Is it in your Bible? Then, the ear. After that, the full corn in the air. We are reading to 32. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest is come. 30. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like the grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. Last verse. But when it is sown, it groweth up, and becometh greater than all the herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. I had the privilege of learning this deep law of destiny very early in life. The law of process. Write this down please everyone. You must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God. You must be tested and proven in order to be honored by God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, we're looking at scriptures from verse 11. You must be tested.
tested and proven in order to be honored by God. There is nobody who will taste of the new kingdom honor as far as destiny and the kingdom is concerned until and unless you are tested and you are proven. We we'll begin our reading from verse 11. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command you this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, 14, then thy heart shall be lifted up. This is why God needs to test and prove people. It's a tendency in the heart of all men without exception. And forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, 15. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents, scorpions, drought, where there was no water? Who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint? 16. It says, who fed thee? Let's read 16 together. Ready? One to read. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not? Why? That he might humble thee. And that he might prove thee to what end? To do thee good at thy latter end. Let me tell you sincerely. God tests people. God proves people. Even men prove people before they lift them. There is no responsible man. There is no responsible leader. There is no responsible father who will not test and prove people to ascertain their capacity and their capabilities before lifting them. And even their tendencies. You must be tested and Psalm 66 verse 12. Psalm 66 and verse 12. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. <laughs> we went through fire and through water but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place but before we got there you caused men to ride over our heads we went through fire and we went through water which one is better fire or water <laughs> are we together it's like saying which one is better to die by shooting or to die by an arrow all of them will cause something to your body and you will still die you cause men to ride over our heads we went through water and through fire but the same you brought us into a wealthy place process is very powerful there will always be seasons in a man's life where God will be proving you to prune every tendency that can destroy and abort your glorious future. And let me tell you the truth, that is about the hardest phase in the life of a believer. Because at those points, I taught you this already, that is when you experience what we call the silence of God. You will live in the silence of God once and again. And if you do not understand that you are being proven, you will waste that season. And you will find out that the destiny that was prophesied over you would never even come to pass. Number two. The second thing you have to know about process is that it takes time for true success and your destiny to manifest. No matter how you hurry destiny, it takes time for true success and it takes time for destiny to manifest hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 i want us to read it in concert when we see it displayed everyone ready please look up one to read and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise the he being abraham and so after he had 
patiently endured he obtained the promise what does process do in your life i want to give you about four or so reasons and then we'll end it and pray for tonight about four or five reasons are you ready number one why do i have to go through process with god number one process tests your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny process will test your loyalty and your commitment not just to god your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny are you that determined to make it process will test and even prune your loyalty and your commitment to fulfilling your destiny luke chapter 9 please and verse 62 luke 9 62 and jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the floor and looking back is fit for the kingdom of god process no matter what it takes that in the name of jesus christ i have set my face on the, like a flint and i will push through it may be gradual but i must become that kingdom financier it may be gradual but i must become that man of god number two what does process achieve in your life process builds patience process builds patience james chapter one two and three we read that already please just write it down for sake of time there are many people who it takes the discipline of process to bring them to a point where they can become patient in life we live in a generation of impatience fast everything we want it immediately stop stop and while it is true that god is a god of speed there is a difference between speed and rush god gives people speed after he has made them and built them but god does not rush people are we together isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 and 2 very popular scripture it says fear not I have redeemed you i have called you by name thou art mine verse 2 i love verse 2 so much it says when thou passest through water i will be with you when thou passest through the river it shall not overflow you but when it gets to fire it didn't say where you pass where you run it say where you walk why do i need to walk through fire Abba God, it's enough that I'm there. I thought I would rush out. Because that fire has an assignment to roast many things away out of your life. There are things water cannot remove. <clears throat> there are things even the strength of the river cannot remove. It will take fire. And let me tell you, when you are walking through that fire, not even your tears will accelerate the pace. You will walk slowly. It will burn pride. It will burn every kind of thing. You will get to a point where when you get out of that fire, you will be as light as a feather, ready to fly. Some of you, you are in that fire right now. It is not always a demonic attack. The anointing of the Holy Spirit was designed to fight Satan, not God. So sometimes when you are praying and asking the anointing to fight and it's not fighting certain things, it may be because it is not Satan. The anointing does not fight God. Process. Process. You walk through fire. Three members. Six months. Two years. Three members. You are angry. You are offended. You are saying, even the people I raised, now they have mega churches and God says, stay. I know what I'm doing. When you walk through fire, let me speak to someone here. You may be in a season where you are fulfilling the law of process. Don't abort destiny. Obtain the grace to stay. There is something that fire is doing. And when it is done, there is nobody who is a normal human being who will carry raw meat. Even if you go to the bush and you kill meat, 
Nobody will come to a restaurant just to sit down and start eating raw meat. You just share a raw cow and people are just eating. No. It will pass through fire. When you get to the kitchen in any restaurant, it is hot. There is no kitchen that is cold because that is where food is prepared. Did you hear me? There is no kitchen in any restaurant that is cold. The signature of any kitchen, even if you are blind, you will know you are in the kitchen because of fire. Several things on fire. And while it is on fire, the chef is laughing. And those who need to eat, they are waiting impatiently. And they do not know that it is fire that is responsible for their satisfaction. Fire. They place that meat there, they turn it, they turn it back again, they add something and turn it again. And while that is happening, something else is in the pot, cooking and boiling. And the man is laughing. And it starts to change shape, or does change color, or does change texture. Many things happen under fire. Can I tell you, nobody goes through fire and comes out the way you enter. No, no. For some of you, the fire will change your shape. For some of you, the fire will change your color spiritually. For some of you, the fire will change your appetite. My encouragement is let the fire do its work. Let the fire do its work. Let the fire do its work. It may be painful. The fire may come as a temporal lack of finances. Let the fire do its work. The fire may be having several certificates and yet it does not seem to bring you anything. I'm telling you, sometimes it's not the devil. Let the fire do its work. There is good waiting for you at the end. Is someone learning? Number three. So number one, to test your loyalty and commitment to fulfilling your vision. Number two, fire builds patience. Number three. You know what fire does? I mean, you know what process does? Process helps you to appreciate the success of other people it appreciate it helps you to honor and appreciate successful people when you do not pass through fire and you don't have process you may not be able to appreciate the sacrifices and the results of others god allows us to pass through these seasons of process so that you would not downplay results when you see it can I tell you this? We live in a world where it is very easy to talk when you are not the one in the football field playing. You sit down outside in the stadium of life and you are watching people playing and the person misses the ball and the person is tired and breathing and you are watching and saying, just this guy would have just dribbled now. What is just dribbled and you would have just passed. And you do not know that your own match is waiting. Sooner or later, God puts you and in 10 minutes you are tired. He says, no, it's 90 minutes. Keep going. Are we together? It is easy to commend when you are standing outside and you are not the one actively involved. So, a process helps us so that we can appreciate what successful people went through whether in ministry listen as i grow in ministry and as i grow in leadership i'm cultivating a renewed regard and respect i've always known this but i'm knowing it even pragmatically you know why many times when you are teaching in conferences it's pastors you see crying in front and sometimes rolling on the ground because most of them are in the middle of those things they were commentators before they started ministry. After 10 years, they came to the realization that you really need to know some things. How about many young people? It's easy to see our parents and those who have gone ahead of us and to match their scripts and write all kinds of things and say, this is my father, I don't know where he was when all his colleagues were making it. Now you become a father and you are surprised you have, you have BP because of his school fees of 50,000 and yet your father trained eight of you we ate meat only on Sunday you, they are about to throw you out of your house you and your wife at least your father was able to provide that let me tell you this do not commit to people who do not go through the law of process they will not have an appreciation and a regard for others especially for the great 
Are we together? This is very, very powerful. A very deep and powerful mystery. 2 Corinthians 11, 27. 2 Corinthians 11, 27. This is Paul. In fact, if we had time, we would have read the entire span. But he was saying something here. When you begin to read from verse 20 down to 29 thereabout, he said, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting, in cold and nakedness. He was saying, don't you think I just became an apostle by luck? These were some of the things I went through. You see, when you see great people, because of the way the palace would decorate you and perfume you, you will not smell like the prison again. But make no mistake, it was from the prison you got there. Are we together now? Yes. Most people who criticize and most people who are involved in talking about people, it is because they do not have track record of greatness. Let me tell you the truth. When you go through the law of process, you will appreciate great people with profound respect. Wow. This man had to go through this to become a pilot. This man had to go through this to become a chartered accountant. This man had to go through this. There are people who will not be able to pastor 100 members effectively. The trouble of 100 members will depress them till they almost plunge into depression. And yet you see a man leading a ministry of thousands of people and all these people, they are just lucky. No. Sometimes God helps critics by giving them opportunities. The way God helps critics is by giving them what you are criticizing, God will give you as a gift or your take. And then you will see it as a breakthrough and by yourself. There are many people who can criticize, am I not also anointed, say for instance, and God says, okay, let me give you open doors. And you will preach for three months non-stop. At the end of it, you will sit down and you will start. Which topic have I not preached? Leadership. I said it the other day. Oh, I, I preached that day on Abraham. I preached about him. And then you will now know the man who does three services or five services or preaches about eight sermons every day and he has done it for three or four decades without fail you now know that these people have something to say are we together my uncle is such a greedy man doesn't give anybody money no problem god helps you by giving you your first five million and as soon as that five million comes somebody will say please we need a surgery it's just three million we need otherwise somebody would die and i saw you in a vision and god said i should come and seek help that's when you will know that so it's not easy like that in the vision i saw someone giving you five million is that true sir you don't know whether you should lie or tell the truth now you know what it feels when you tell people just give me money anytime and they keep giving you let me tell you the truth until you are there just keep quiet let me repeat myself until you are there wearing the shoes just keep quiet is god speaking to us <laughs> what number now number four why does God pass us through processes? Are you ready? To create memories and experiences in our lives that will help us sustain the success that is before us. To create memories. And experiences that will help us sustain the success that is before us. It is very powerful. Why do we go through processes? Why do you have to subscribe to the law of process? Because there is something that you go through in those seasons of pain that will help you to be able to manage greatness. Can I tell you, ask anybody who has tasted of genuine greatness, there is a skill it takes. Many years ago, I had a dream. And in that dream, a man of God in this nation he was standing on stage and I was invited to come and preach. I considered myself from that dream that, ah, 
how could I be given this great platform? And then when I came in the dream, I found out that you were not standing on the ground like this. It's like you have to climb the, pulp the pulpit and stand. And it was so slippery. When I stood there, ah, I had to hold it and say, is this, I'm, I'm just trying to gain my footing. And yet the man was standing there very easily. I woke up from that dream and I said, wow, there is a skill to standing here. It's more than just facing the pulpit. There are those who didn't stand well. They didn't even stand up to two years. If you see people standing here, all you see is not all there is. So, let me tell you this. There are many people today, respectfully speaking, not to downplay your pedigree. By the time you see 10 million, 100 million, 1 billion, you will run in a way that God must ask you what he asked Adam. Where are you? I can't find you again. I can't find you again. It's not only your pastor that cannot find you. Where are you? Your wife can't find you. Your children can't find you. Even your destiny cannot find you. Where are you? So, hold on. If God knows that that is the weight of honor he's bringing, he will subject you to a season that no matter the level of lifting, the memory of what you went through, do you think Joseph will waste his opportunity like that? I've taught you here. After many years of being in the prison, no, he would maximize destiny. Most people waste greatness because they really did not pay any serious price for it. Especially for those who inherited it. There is a difference between, respectfully speaking, someone who just inherited wealth and blessings just like that. And somebody who started from minus one before you got to zero, before you now started climbing, they are disciplined, a lot more disciplined. Mismanagement many times is because we do not have a history and a track record of process. Are we together? Yes. When pride wants to take over your life, the Holy Spirit can easily pick one story from your life and remind you, remember where I brought you from. And quickly, you call yourself to order. What besides a great man who does not have a history of experiences where the Holy Spirit can pull from to put your life in order? You will not go far. Are we together? Finally, the final reason why we go through process is so that through the pain and through the process we can gain experience to be able to raise others why does god introduce process to our lives so that through the pain and through the process that we go through we will gain experience that will empower us to raise others second corinthians 11 Okay, we already took that. Let's, let's do 2 Corinthians 1, 4. 2 Corinthians 1, 4. Look at me, please. It says, who comforted us in all our tribulation. Is that in your Bible? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God. When you go through a process... The day you see somebody going through it, you can draw from your experience and say, I have been there. Man of God, don't worry. Apostle, I give so much to my members. I love them with all my heart and they don't appreciate me. And then the man can say, let me tell you a story. In 1961 or 1971, I remember having preached, they beat me and drove me out of one village. And you are listening and learning and you are drawing strength from it. Can I tell you, you are not a true mentor if you don't have stories. What becomes the basis of your teaching? It is not only principles. They say the secret of great men is hidden in their stories. So God is giving you stories today 
Sometimes I share the bits of my experiences that I share and I almost release them as I'm sharing them and nodding my head and saying how time flies. Who would have known that those seasons were only preparing me for these days? And who, who knows the days now, all the seasons that I'm in now, only God knows what He's preparing me for. Can I tell you the truth? You must learn to laugh when the law of process is at work in your life. Rejoice even when you do not understand God. Because you are drawing a story. How else will you be able to help people, help young people to prosper if you yourself have not tasted of poverty and all of that? Now you can tell them, I know what it means to be 10 years without a job. I know what it means. Let me tell you this. What looks like the basis for shame in your life today will become what the nations will come to honor you for. There are times in your life where a call will be made over your destiny. But the requirement to climb that table of greatness is who has a scar in his hand. Anybody who does not have a scar, they will tell you, sorry, you are not allowed. So you may be going through things today. The scar that God is allowing you to have has monetary value. It has honor value. Go through it with grace. As a man of God, tomorrow... If you are able to teach people and God honors you and gives you a global ministry, when a young man comes and says, Sir, I'm, I'm in debt, I'm not able to do ministry well, you smile because it's not only memory verses you have, you have memories. You can draw from it and say, I know what to tell you. Believe me, I know what to tell you. And then you begin to give the person stories. Today, people come and they meet me and they say, Ah, Apostle, I am owing. Um, my life, I tell them, relax, please. Have you eaten? No, you don't know that. Have you eaten? This man talking to you as, as I know what it means to be under financial pressure so that we can comfort others with the same comfort. Do not waste your pain. There is a crown that your pain today will put on your head. My question for you as we wrap up tonight's teaching is can God count on you? Are you going to join the many who have disappointed God and disappointed destiny? Or are you going to make up your mind? Whatever you want to do Lord you can do through me Whatever you want to say Lord you can say to me whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift to wherever you want to go Lord you can go I'm yours. I'm yours forevermore. Whatever you want to start, Lord, you can start. Whatever you want to end, Lord, you can end. For I'm yours. I'm yours forevermore. a vow and I made a covenant with my destiny that I will not fail God and I will not fail my generation. But talk is cheap. These are the principles that you must be willing to go. If you cannot live with these principles, my dear brother, my dear sister, 
let me assure you that destiny will only remain prophecy an empty talk from the lips of a non-compliant believer there are two prayer points we are going to pray right now many of us are stepping into defining moments in our lives god has pointed all these areas there has to be a prayer point you've already generated from this teaching without me having to prompt you for some of you it is the understanding that there is destiny within me some of you is the understanding that just folding my arms and crossing my legs will not actualize destiny some of you you've learned tonight that destiny can be aborted yes sir it can some of you need discovery some of you need development some of you need to go for knowledge some of you need to invest in prayer very very important some of you need to go for competence and excellence are we together some of you need to be disciplined and focused and some of you need to stand haven't done all to stand to understand that process is not anything strange process is not necessarily an attack no no matter how how well a mother feeds her baby the baby will not become an adult by the next day it will still be called a healthy baby and if an elderly man starves himself to death he will not say he will not be a baby an elderly man who became a baby he will be a malnourished elderly man there are some things that only time does if a woman takes in even if she's praying in tongues every day the time allotted for pregnancy is nine months she will have to wait in hope every day she can pray for supernatural birth and safety while she's carrying the baby but that nine months it must happen no matter how gifted your child is in nigeria and most parts of the world once he's not 18 years according to the law of the land if he's caught driving around they will take him to court even if he's as tall as an iroko tree if he's 13 years his height notwithstanding he will wait let me tell you the truth there are some things that will only happen with time and in time man of god no matter how you pray and fast take it easy the anointing will come gradually don't expect to get benigin's anointing overnight don't expect the grace and the impact and the result that is upon our fathers to land on you but they laid hands on me i can tell you what came on you the whole thing came on you but the administration of it is part time and by your knowledge god isn't foolish god will not carry the load that a camel carries and put it on a tortoise or put it on a dog it will kill you he says to not cast a spell before swine so for some of you be careful what you are praying for transfer that prayer into your future and be grateful for what god is doing now lord i'm praying if if i do not make 10 billion or 50 billion by the end of 2022 except god is not faithful let me help you you are not wrong you are not a sinner you trust the wisdom you need because the way god works he does not jump you from being a broke person to have 50 billion you cannot have 50 billion without being friends with government and certain people there is a network that will have to maintain that level of cash flow there are many things we do not know we just claim things blindly and preachers is good to pray for people but we must teach them wisdom so we stop mocking ourselves in church and making a fool of ourselves god gives speed god makes great but there is a process final scripture luke 252 give it to us in amplified if we can or niv any of the versions and jesus increased one version will say grew this statement for many years disturbed me why should jesus grow jesus grow what are you growing into again 
the word, the logos, not part of it. The, the fullness of the expression of the Godhead. But when he became a man, he was never born an adult. There was only one adult who came and caused trouble immediately. And God said, no, from that time, everybody must go through process. Can I tell you, run away from people with instant results without process. Before you celebrate people and draw their achievements and ruin your space and your destiny, find out whether there is a track record. If you don't find blood there, if you don't find tears there, if you don't find faith there, if there is no equation in their life where they have to trust God and agree with God, you are sitting on a time bomb. Is God helping us? Quit the pressure of trying to belong to associations and groups. Be patient and grow. If God has given you the leverage of great parents or a good ministry, good mentorship, take it as a leverage, but it will not replace this price that you must pay. Is someone ready to pray? Just two prayer points tonight. One, cry for grace. Lord, grace to not disappoint you and grace to not disappoint my generation. Go ahead and pray. May my life not be a lesson and a warning may it be an inspiration someone is praying may my life not be a lesson and a warning let it be an inspiration someone is praying that when they talk about those making impact for the kingdom in ministry in business Forget about the naysayers. Focus on your destiny. Everyone on earth needs help, including arrogant people. Everyone on earth needs help, including those who act like they do not. So don't mind anybody who looks down on you. Open up your heart early and say, God help me. Someone is praying. For everyone that asketh, receive it. Lord, I will not disappoint you and I will not disappoint my generation. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. I obtain grace. Someone pray. Grace to find my place in life. Grace to be determined. Grace to go for knowledge. Grace to invest in prayer as a lifestyle. Grace to be disciplined and to be focused. Grace to be competent and excellent. Grace to endure. Let the fire walk me, O God, to become that vessel of honor. Let the fire prune everything. I will pass through the law of process with honor. Go ahead and pray. I obtain grace to pass through the, the season of process. You are blessing me. I thank you for what you have done in my life. In the name of Jesus. Look up please. Let me tell you one of the major principles I learned from our fathers of faith. That has helped my life in a mighty way today. A life of consistent gratitude. For many of you, if you take your eyes away from all this life of complaining and grumbling, as a man of God, God gave me 1,000 members. Oh God, if you live in that realm, you will fail. Some of you, you may not have 1 million. The 200,000 naira you have in your account, the 10 million, the 100 million, you have 1 billion, you are saying, God, what is in 100 billion you cannot give me? Father, that you were able to trust me with one billion, I am grateful. This is what many generations may not even get. I am grateful. When we were growing up, we used to sing the song, Some have food, but cannot eat. Some can eat, but have no food. We have food, and we can eat. 
glory be. Good values. Now our children just say plus, plus, Jesus minus Satan. Very indisciplined way of saying thank you over a meal. When last did you take your eyes away from what God has not done to look at the many things he has done? Is someone learning now? Make up your mind that this year will not be a year of complaining and grumbling, unhealthy comparison. Lord, thank God for the rapper you gave me, but is this person not a human being too? Why are you giving her a rapper of two million and you gave me a rapper of two hundred? And God says you will remain there because you think I'm stupid for trusting you. Everything multiplies when you become thankful and thoughtful. God, God sees my heart and I will tell you sincerely, I have never, never, ever wished to say, Oh God, please, I'm not grateful. Just make me like this. Mm, I don't do that. Lord, I am grateful. Right from the time this ministry was in its infancy, if I come for Koinonia today sincerely and I see only 10 or 20 people, from a leadership standpoint, I will be concerned and responsible and find out why. But intrinsically from my heart, I will stand before the God of heaven and say, the privilege you gave me to teach somebody. Don't, don't downplay the fact that somebody will leave his house and come to listen to you. I've taught you, not everybody thinks you are a big deal. A man of God called me one time some years ago and said he went somewhere and the honorarium they gave him was so insulting. I just kept quiet. And I just counseled him. I said, sir, well, I respect your philosophies, but I have never preached because of money. I never, when I started ministry, I didn't even know that a man of God goes to preach and they package an envelope and give him. I never knew that. Sometimes it's when I'm done and I'm climbing the bike going. They would tear 2A and roll money just looking like Indian hemp and just squeeze it and give me. And I receive it with joy. It's till I get home that I even know what it is that, that they gave me. But right now we have many people. You preach, you go to a ministry where you see that the gen is often and only you know they are struggling. And you are, I'm, not, I'm not here to cause any trouble in the body of Christ. We must be careful. If you don't know how to kneel down and say, thank you, thank you. God, you gave me tea. I'm tired. Where is bread? God said, because we even have the mouth to drink the tea. They murmured in the wilderness. Is it in your Bible? It says, do everything without complaining or argument. In the next one minute, I know that our time is up, but I want you, I don't know how you will say it, but I want you to look at this God who has been merciful from January till now June. It's part of the journey to your, I don't know how you are going to do it. You don't have to kneel or stand or whatever, but let it be from your heart. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Father, I've not gotten the job yet, but I didn't last food this year. I ate healthier and happier than even people who had jobs. Someone say thank you. I roamed around people with communicable diseases. And Lord, you have kept me and protected me. The same thing someone did and died. I did the same thing and I'm still standing. I'd like you to pray. Someone invested his money somewhere. Did not get returns and plunged to depression and died. You invested your money there. And yet you are still standing. You have the courage to even stand. Say thank you. Take your eyes away from what God has not done. Just one minute. Is someone praying? I praise you. 
I praise you, oh Lord. I praise you, I praise you, oh Lord. In my life, Lord, I see what you're doing. One more time, Lord, I lift my hands in praise. Of your holy name, I lift my hands in praise. One last time, from the depth of your heart, I praise you, I praise you, oh I praise you, I praise you, oh Jesus, thank you for your hand in this ministry. Thank you for the miracles. Oh, how can we complain? You have been faithful. Thank you for every life and every family represented here. Thank you for everything that has happened in and around our lives from January till now. Whether we've understood it or not, we say thank you. Because indeed you are faithful. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for favor. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for deliverance. Lord, we vow tonight that we will live thankful lives. As we trust you to walk us through the various phases of our destinies. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Lord, we declare as a people and as individuals that we will not abort destiny in the name of Jesus Christ that which has been earmarked for us as far as destiny is concerned and as far as your kingdom come agenda is concerned Lord we will leave it to its fullest I pray for everyone tonight oh God following from Zaria here in Abuja and across the nations of the earth in the name of Jesus the grace to fulfill your destiny receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ and for some of you who have veered off the path of destiny the Lord God of heaven is showing you mercy tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ amen and amen there are people here tonight who haven't heard the things please keep standing let's just stand for a minute or two and let's minimize movement please there are people here whilst you heard me teach and preach the holy ghost began to speak to you that this service was for you he's brought you here tonight to give you an opportunity to start afresh for some of you and then for some of you you've never even made that decision for jesus listen Coming to Jesus is not a religious thing. This is not just about a man of God making an altar call and you responding to it. It is the Lord Jesus himself calling you to give you an experience. You can choose to reject Jesus. It is still within your power. Remember I told you that our destinies are predetermined by God but actualized through the decisions and the choices. Every one of us here who is saved had to make this decision consciously and tonight God is giving you a chance we have just a few minutes a minute or two for you you are here and you are saying apostle I truly sincerely want to make it right with Jesus or you are saying apostle I remember giving my heart to the Lord but honestly as it is now would you give me the chance to make it right with him there is always room at the cross for you I will count one to five because of our time and may I request that you quickly run if you can 
walk fast if you can and make your way to the front here and for those of you who are scattered across the overflows you may do well to walk to the front of your screens following from the nations of the earth whether in your room your office following by way of television now is your chance to make jesus lord of your life the bible says as many who will come to him he will not cast away come one are we celebrating them koinonia leave your seat and come to jesus don't be ashamed don't be afraid apostle i desire to come but i'm ashamed i'm afraid come come to jesus He's willing to give you a new beginning young old from far and near male female there is enough room at the cross come to jesus three i count five and then we begin to pray perhaps someone is still thinking apostle i do not consider myself to be a bad person only that i cannot remember making this decision join them join them there is such a thing as the assurance of salvation after everything i've done with my life can god still take me back absolutely you are welcome hallelujah praise the name of the lord i appreciate every one of you please come stand very quickly and the bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away listen as you're standing here i want you to truly believe that you're standing before jesus the son of the living god and that he's able to give you a new beginning praise the name of the lord i'm going to lead you to pray this prayer and may i request that you pray it from the depth of your heart it's more than a poem you're reciting this is a declaration of your dependence and your need for jesus please lift your right hand high above your head if you can and if you are following from across the world you can do same say after me everyone say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive forgiveness of sin and i declare that you are my savior you are my lord and you are my king i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. No man is able to draw them except you draw them by your spirit. They have come and they have made this declaration of faith. Therefore, by the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I call you recipients of eternal life. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go forward ever and backward never. He gives you a new beginning from tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and God bless you. Now please may I request their counselors waving the placard and waving their hands at you. My right, which is your left, please all of you in concert, can you just move? to my right which is your left or whatever direction where you find the counselors waving at you they will have a word with you very briefly and then you'll be back to your seat hallelujah praise the name of the Lord have you been blessed tonight let me speak over your life and then we'll wrap up for tonight I can assure you of one thing that when God is done with you all that will be left in your life is beauty and glory in the name of Jesus I decree and declare over your life may the blessings of heaven rest upon you every trouble of your destiny this is the week the Lord separates you from them permanently in the name of Jesus the wisdom you need to live an excelling life and to maximize destiny let it be released upon you fresh fire upon your prayer altar 
fresh fire upon your word study life. You are an exceptional believer. The presence of the Holy Spirit in your life becomes evident to all. Let favor rest upon your life and it is speaking over your life. The grace to go through the seasons and the phases of your destiny, I release upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that you are blessed today and you are blessed all through this month. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Again, the one who died for us is not only a savior, he is king. The monarch, not only of this universe, the monarch, he sits alone without any threat whatsoever. There are kings that need people to watch their back just in case there is conspiracy. Lucifer tried it and there was war in heaven. And the Bible says, Michael the archangel, that he judged him and there was no place found for him. Satan, that old serpent. He sits over the circumference of time and manipulates everything according to his will. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. The protocol is that he that cometh unto God, you must come believing that he exists. You are, not, you are not coming before a politician. You are not coming before a consular of a, a, an embassy to give you a visa. You are coming before not only your savior, but the monarch of the universe. When he says, done, believe me, it is done. Kings are not talkatives. It is, a, it is a system to validate their authority. When you find a king that is a talkative, it means there is a threat to his understanding of power. When they speak, it is by the decree of the king. And the Bible says, where the word of the king is, there is power. I believe in the name of Jesus that in this service tonight, the king will speak over someone's life speak over someone's destiny it was the king that gave the rivers their borders and said thus far have you come do not cross this boundary and for thousands of years millions they have kept in obedience regardless the rebellion of satan When the earth was immersed in water, it was at the decree of the king that the rivers returned back to their place of habitation and gave room for land. This king that we serve is a mighty king. He is God, but he is king. Our confidence is based on the fact that he stands behind us like a mighty, terrible one. Are we blessed? I have come to you tonight, O oh King of Zion. Give me an encounter. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one whose kingdom there is no end, we worship. Speak to our hearts tonight. Grant us superior wisdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. They go from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. When we come week in week out, we come to encounter strength. We come to encounter the wisdom of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone. This is Koinonia. Thank you so much for the sacrifice of your time, especially for those who have come from far and near. I, I think I promised last week, I hope I'm right on that, 
that we're going to recognize and honor our international guests. Did we do that already? I think we did that. Did we do that last week? Anyway, all of our international guests, may God bless you. We thank you for the sacrifice of coming from across the globe. The Lord bless you. We have people coming in literally every week and we recognize and honor your sacrifices. One thing for sure is you will not come here and go back the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me just honor a few people for sake of um, protocol. Um, we have our very own father, Bishop Obionubogu. God bless you. God bless you, Daddy. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Who would know and believe that 84 years looks like this? Hallelujah. We covet that grace that day. Sorry for the embarrassment, but we covet that grace. 84 years, standing, strong, tall, serving the purposes of the kingdom. We honor you, sir. We honor you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We also have in our midst a dear, wonderful man of God, Reverend Chidi Okorafo. Let's honor him. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Thank you so, so much. Sincerely appreciate you. Thank you. We have Reverend Yusuf Akila. Thank you so much. House on the Rock, just thank you. I have my dear friend and brother, Pastor Fred Zamani. God bless you. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you. And our very own Pastor Peter Sadiq. God bless you. Hallelujah. Everyone who has come, we honor and we recognize you. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Commanding salvation over territories, part two. We're looking at a two-part series that seeks to give us understanding on how to command salvation over territories last the week before last when we considered part one the sub team was the witness of mighty works I did teach us that results are evangelists they also preach that it is not just men that preach mighty works are also witnesses across a territory and that personal results are a mighty tool as far as evangelism and the enthroning of Christ is concerned. That when believers contend to see results in their lives, it is not just for the sake of gratifying the flesh and a sense of progress, that God is interested in your producing results because the evidence that comes from and through your life is able to preach to a territory hallelujah that there is a dimension of the gospel that should not be preached by men it should be preached by results results have a voice results have a language that the territory can understand are we together now and that if the church of the lord jesus christ and if believers are barren of results, there is a dimension of kingdom advance that cannot happen at a territorial level. I told us that it matters that a territory gets saved. A territory can be born again, not just individuals. What happens to the human spirit can happen to a territory. Every territory has a soul and it can be saved too. Are we together? But that altar call will not be made just by the speakings of men. It is your result that makes that altar call. And that the dexterity of your result can call a territory to its knees to acknowledge Jesus. I told you that individuals can be saved and yet not be safe. Because the safety of the individuals depends on the salvation of the territory. Are we following now? For a long time, the context of our evangelism has been limited to personal salvations. And that is important. But if we stop there, it is possible for an individual to be saved and a territory is in decadence. And the saved individual becomes a victim 
of the decadence of the territory. An example was Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot had honor to the God of the Bible, but because he was dwelling amongst a people who were perverse, it took the intervention of the angels to help him and his family. Is that true? Yes. When Isaiah saw the Lord in chapter 6, he made two confessions. Number one, he said, I am a man of unclean lips. Then number two, I dwell amidst the people of unclean lips. So if you are the only one who is saved in your territory, you may be saved as far as your personal salvation is concerned. But the territory, you can be a victim of that territory. Sadly, it is purported that many, many nations in Africa and the world are corrupt. My question is, are you corrupt as an individual? But you have to answer a corporate name because you are in a territory that has not been saved. So territorial salvation matters to God as much as personal salvation. Can I tell you this? When we do not pay attention to the salvation of a territory all it takes is one generation of godly men to pass away and decadence will return and become the order of the day we have seen this in scripture we have seen this through church history that it is possible for satan to be patient and allow a whole generation of those who call upon the name of the lord to be saved when moses was advocating the exodus of god's people from egypt pharaoh began to make negotiations and he said we will allow you but we will keep your children moses said no way we are all going the command is for all of us so just because you are saved does not mean everything is all right if your territory does not answer to god you will have to find out what is happening to the schools where your children go to. You will have to find out what happens to you in the hospital. You will have to find out what happens to the police and all the institutions within that territory. A territory can and should be born again. The power and the witness of mighty works. It is on account of this that we sincerely desire to produce results results all wise we are motivated by the understanding that our results are preachers so it is not just a manifesto of the flesh a desire to have and to become it is a desire that in and through our results that message of the gospel be preached to the territory are we together now and we looked at a few reasons why individuals do not command the kind of results that can preach to a territory i listed four of them let me do a quick recap and we'll get into tonight's teaching number one i said over dependence on the strength of the flesh you still remember that the reason why we are not able to see the manifested power of god in and through our lives is because there is over dependence on the strength of the flesh technology individuals philosophies and the formula of men number two ignorance and disobedience to god's principles god is a god of systems and ignorance and disobedience to his principles and his systems will always leave the believer defeated my people who see lamented chapter 4 and verse 6 are destroyed even though they are my people they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge ignorance and disobedience to god's principles number three demonic oppression the third reason why individuals do not command and produce the kinds of results in and through their lives that bring glory to jesus is demonic oppression the bible is very clear as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness in first thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18 like we considered the week we discussed this that I would have come to you Paul was speaking to the church in Thessalonica he said but Satan hindered us Satan does not just hinder men Satan can hinder things he can hinder 
doors from opening he can hinder help us from reaching you it is possible and then number four we said the fourth reason why believers do not command results in their lives is that they trivialize and ignore the place of spiritual empowerment in this kingdom it takes empowerment to rise and to reign Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 it says to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might our strength is derived from the power of his might keep that scripture let's look at amplified it says to draw your strength from your union your oneness with him it says in conclusion be strong in the Lord be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which his boundless might provides your oneness with Christ has a spiritual implication you should be strong in that consciousness are we together the Bible clearly tells us that it is through the greatness of his power Psalm 66 and verse 3 that the enemies submit themselves there are wicked spirits across territories and it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to dislodge them and enthrone Christ. Hallelujah. Commanding salvation over territories. Part one was the witness of mighty works. Let's go to part two now. Commanding salvation over territories. Part two. I want to teach you a very deep mystery tonight. Please open your spirit, your mind. If you understand what I want to teach you tonight, you will command dominion over territories. And I trust God that God will use us in no small way to bring not just individuals but territories to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Commanding salvation over territories. Part 2, we are going to be looking at the power of prophetic intercession. Commanding salvation over territories. The power of prophetic intercession. Jeremiah chapter 27 and verse 18. We'll look at three scriptures or four and then I'll begin to read. Please read with me. It's projected. Ready? Read. But if they be prophets and if the word of the Lord be with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem go not to Babylon. If it is true that they are prophets, if it is true that the word of the Lord is with them, then they should make intercession to stop what is left from going to Babylon. The power of prophetic intercession. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that there is the ministry of the intercessor that intercession is a ministry and that all believers without reservation are called into that ministry in as much as there are people who are uniquely graced to be intercessors but that the ministry of intercession like the work of the evangelist who named the name of christ first timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 first timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 to 4 please pay attention i exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men reading to verse 4 for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. 
that means the quietness and the peace of that territory does not just depend on what happens in the government house does not just depend on what happens technologically that the saints have an assignment in maintaining peace over their territories in all godliness and honesty verse 3 for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior who desires that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth and all this happens through the ministry of intercession we intercede for all men for kings for nobles for those in authority hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 Listen to this and look at it very carefully. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him because of a mystery, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession. It is because he makes intercession that we know salvation can reach to the uttermost. He is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God, seeing that there is a ministry that he engages in that does not fail, that he makes intercession for them. What is intercession? Intercession is not just mere prayer. What is intercession? The word intercede means to midwife. The word intercede means to become a bridge. Please pay attention. The word intercede means to stand in the gap. Are we together now? Yes. So intercession gives the idea of mediating over a person, over a people, so that the counsel of darkness, spiritually speaking now, does not prevail over their life. And so that the purposes of God find expression over their lives. To intercede means to stand in the gap in prayer over individuals, over families, over cities, over territories, over nations. To the intent that number one, the purposes and the counsel of darkness be thwarted over those individuals. And number two, the purposes of Christ be enthroned. The assignment of intercession seeks to do two things. Number one, to prohibit the hand of Satan, the plot of darkness over individuals. And then it seeks to release the purposes of God to find expression. You have to understand this. The intercessory ministry has to do with stopping the hand of darkness because i hope you know from scripture that the church being the light of the world is the principal limitation to the reign of darkness is that true yes that the presence of the church is the reason why evil cannot prevail intercession withholding the plot of darkness over individuals, over families, over nations, over territories, and allowing the cause of the kingdom to find expression. Many believers do not understand the place of prophetic intercession in birthing the purposes of God over the lives of individuals and territories. Are we blessed? Ezekiel chapter 22. Let's read from verse 23. Please pay attention to this scripture. Ezekiel 22 from verse 23. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art a land that is not cleansed, nor reigned upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. 
they have devoured souls they have taken the treasure and precious things they have made how many we they have made how many widows in the midst thereof 26 her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things they have put no difference between holy and profane neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my sabbath and i am profaned among them next verse her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey this is a description of the state of a territory to shed blood are you aware of the latest passion you see in our region over human sacrifices does that give you any concern this is what the bible is saying to shed blood and to destroy souls to the intent that they get this honest gain 28 and her prophets have doubted them an untempered mortar seeing vanity and divining lies unto them saying thus saith the lord when the lord has not spoken 29 the people of the land have used oppression and have exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully next verse and i sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge that is the spiritual definition of intercession and stand in the gap before me for what the land not just for the people that i should not destroy it but i found the consequence next verse therefore i have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath their own ways i have recompensed upon their heads saith the lord god can i tell you this tragedy awaits any territory tragedy awaits any family tragedy awaits any people group that ignores the ministry of prophetic intercession i tell you why darkness seems to prevail over territories unhindered because there are christians there are prayer warriors but there are very few intercessors the selfishness of believers that has come as a result of immaturity and lack of spiritual growth has also translated to their prayer lives just because you are praying does not mean you are walking in spiritual accuracy are we blessed there are many examples of intercession in scripture i'll pick three to help us understand that intercession is a powerful ministry number one let's go to the patriarch abraham the bible says look unto abraham your father and to sarah that body so we are looking up to him to study in genesis chapter 18 please give us from verse 16 remember the visitation of the three angels that came to abraham haven't served them the bible says and the men arose long reading be patient they arose up from tents and looked towards sodom and abraham went with them to bring them on the way uh-huh very quickly please and the lord said shall i hide from abraham that thing which i do seeing that abraham shall surely be a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him for i know him that he will command his children and his household after him that they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord might bring upon abraham that which he had spoken 20. and the lord said listen carefully now because the cry of sodom and gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which is come unto me and if not I will know and the men turned their faces from tents and went towards Sodom but Abraham stood yet before the Lord 
And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous and the wicked? This is the character of an intercessor. Please go to 23. Are you seeing here that whether Sodom is destroyed or not, it was none of his business. But he reached out to say, Look, I, I do not mean to dishonor you, but are you also going to destroy the righteous and the wicked? Next verse. Per adventure, there be 50 righteous within that city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for 50 righteous that are therein? That be, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should not be as the wicked. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Look at, look at, look at, look at him engaging intelligence in intercession. And the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within that city, what a city. Then I will spare all the place for their sake. And Abraham answered and said, behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which I am but dust and ashes. 28. Per adventure, there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Will thou destroy the city for lack of five? And he said, if I find forty and five, I will not destroy it. 29. And he spake unto him yet again and said, per adventure, there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. Abraham, is it not enough? Watch an intercessor. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure, there shall thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure, there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. You are even tired already. You that is reading the story. You see how you are weary and tired. I say, what are Abraham? Are we together? And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. Abraham was safe. Abraham was fine. Listen to the commendation that God said about Abraham. That as far as you and your children are, I know you will teach them right. Yet, Abraham, hold on here. We want to go and visit a territory. And he said, please. I know that is not my concern. But intercession has made it my concern. Will you destroy the righteous and the wicked? Example number two, Jesus. Jesus the intercessor. Luke chapter 22 from verse 31. Luke 22 from verse 31. Remember the story of Simon and Satan coming into him? And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. I didn't pray for myself. That means Satan would have prevailed. Because the spiritual intelligence to immune yourself from his effect, you do not yet have it. But I bridge that gap in prayer. That thy faith fail not. And when you are converted, use this strategy of intercession to also secure your brethren. That while they are still learning the ways of God, Satan will not have advantage of them. That means when you are converted, become an intercessor. And the people you train, train them to also become intercessors. John 17. Look at the ministry of intercession. Verse 1. Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven 
Watch Jesus intercede now. Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify thee. Uh -huh. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Three, this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. He says, I have glorified thee in the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Five. Now, O Father, glorify me with thy own self and with the glory that I had with thee from before the world was. Uh -huh. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me, and they have kept your word. Verse 7. Now they have known all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Verse 9. I pray for them. I pray for them. Jesus the intercessor. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Verse 10. It says, All and all mine are thine, and thine is mine, and I am glorified in them. Watch the prayer of Jesus now. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. And it says, keep through thy own name those that thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. This is why I know the oneness of the body of Christ must come to pass. Because the person who prayed that prayer request was Jesus himself. Regardless the differences you see now, there is something called the unity of faith. Are we together? Hmm. Romans chapter 8 and verse 34, for sake of time. We are looking at Jesus the intercessor. Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also makes intercession for us that even after he resurrected after his coronation crowning him lord he still today makes intercession for the saints third example of intercession in scripture the early church acts chapter 12. i hope you know that the condition for anything to be a doctrine there is, theologically speaking now, anything is a doctrine. If and when it was adumbrated in the Old Testament, condition number one. It was captured in the life and the experience of Jesus, number two. And it was practiced in the early church, number three. Any truth and any mystery that does not satisfy that threefold condition cannot be called a doctrine. It must be adumbrated, foreshadowed in the Old Testament. It must be captured in the life, the earth work of Jesus. And it must have been practiced by the early church. Are we together? Acts chapter 12. Let's start our reading from verse 1. Now about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church too. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it, that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further. Are you seeing what happens when we don't pray? Notice that the spirit of the Antichrist was the one walking through Herod. He, there were three people who were with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. I hope you know there were different classifications of the disciples. Is that true? There was the 72 there was the twelve, there was the three, and then there was John the Beloved. All of them had different experiences. There was something the twelve had that the seventy-two did not have. There was something the three saw 
that the remaining 12 did not see. Satan, knowing this, began to handpick those he will destroy. Peter, James, and John. Remember, the pillars. He destroyed James. They beheaded James, historically speaking. And he saw that it pleased the people. And he went straight to Peter. If he was done with Peter, he would have destroyed John. There was something. Now, you read the gospel and you find out. Read the writings of these three people. James, Peter, John. Aside from the Pauline epistles, you read their exegesis on, 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 on the truth of God's word. There were mysteries that were given to them. And Satan, knowing this, the spirit of the Antichrist were coming here. The spirits that move across territories. Herod just thought he was being political because it pleased them. He wanted to kill them so that the people would like him. But he did not know he was under the influence over that territory. The Bible says, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further. Say, no way. Shout it. Say, no way. Evil will always proceed further when there are no intercessors. Let me tell you this. Satan will come to a family and test something and watch the reaction. If all that he sees is just discussion and carnal analysis, he will proceed further. I tell you, Satan has the ability to proceed further if unhindered. Look at this. He proceeded further to take Peter also. He tested your finances and you kept quiet. You just assumed nothing was wrong. Your health is coming. I assure you, whatever Satan touches in your life and around your environment is not the only thing he wants. He wants everything. But he will touch something first and watch the reaction. If he finds out you are lukewarm and cold and careless and it does not matter. Everybody in the family just became sick overnight. I'm sure it's just the weather. He's coming again. He will proceed further. The Bible says, Then were the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, Peter now, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending that after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter would have died. Peter was kept in the prison. Help me read, believers. But prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. That means everything Satan planned would have happened. But a midwife came in. A prophetic midwife. Parasuda Pakata. This night a grace is coming on someone that listen based on the architecture of satan it is like a spiritual room they have plotted your family already they have plotted everything and is signed already time for execution but they did not factor you in that plan hear me the reason why job became a victim of what he saw was because there was no intercessor to stand for Job. If there was an intercessor, Satan would be wasting his time. Hear me? The catastrophe did not just touch Job's children because he was an intercessor for them. But no one was an intercessor for him. So when the devil got their intercessor, he got them too. But prayer was made without season of the church unto God for your office, for Nigeria, for your family, for your business, for your village. Prayer was made unto God. That means, could it be that it was not the plan of God for James? to die could it be that their intercessory ministry came late so that lateness made one person to pay the price could it be that John the Baptist was beheaded easily and cheaply because there was no intercessor 
We know that Jesus was preserved because they were two strange intercessors. Simeon, the prophet, and Anna, the prophetess. Otherwise, they would have killed Jesus. So, Please sit down. Prayers was made unto God to, by the church for him. Let's read verse 6, last verse. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door of the prison. Let's finish up and put perspective to it. Verse 7. And behold... At the instance of intercession, the angel of the Lord questioned, where was that angel with James? If we do not understand the principles or the mystery of prophetic intercession our territory will remain godless our territory will remain helpless our families will remain bankrupt of the power and the salvation of Jesus Christ now principles of prophetic intercession let me teach you the principles of prophetic intercession in another series we're going to be dealing um, deeper but just to give the foundation the intercessory ministry is based on two principal foundations. Please listen carefully. The intercessory ministry is based on two principal foundations. Number one, the law of love. The first foundation upon which the intercessory ministry rests is the law of love. Love for God and love for people. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 tells us that God desires that all men be saved. And then when they are saved, that they don't just stop there, but that they grow and mature and come into the knowledge of the truth. So the intercessory ministry is founded on the law of love. You cannot become an intercessor when there is self alive in you. Remember my definition of love, the absence of self. You are walking in love to the degree that there is the absence of self. Why go through the labor of prayer, the labor of fasting, the labor of stretching and discomforting yourself over an issue that is not your business can i tell you this as you will be learning everything you make happen for someone you are delivering yourself to from that trouble that was the mistake of esther when esther had a chance to advocate she was in the palace she was already immune don't forget this is the wife of the king and mordecai sent a warning to her he said, if you leave us, God will raise another help for us. But when they are done with us, when they find out you are a Jew too, you will see what will happen to you in that palace. And Esther said, no, 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 no. She put on her sackcloth and ashes. He said, I'm, I'm going to the king, but let us fast and pray. Pray for me so that I can intercede for you too. They were all, all intercessors for one another. They prayed for her. And she went before the king violated the ordinance of approaching his presence and yet he lifted the golden censer because prayer had gone up if she just stepped in carelessly and casually that inner chamber that would have been the last time what happened to Vashti at least Vashti was driven away she would have been killed you know those days they kill they don't forgive no counseling no nothing they kill straight to the point The law of love you see most of what we do as believers that we think is spirituality is just a marketing of flesh 
there is such a, let me tell you this, you know you are growing spiritually to the degree to which you and your interest decreases. Where you are burdened with the purposes of the kingdom, greater than your personal desires. That was temptation number one. When Satan came to Jesus, temptation number one was your individual appetite. Turn this stone to bread. You are hungry. You need bread. Forget about your assignment and what your father sent you. Satisfy your hunger. And Jesus said, I've moved past that realm. The agenda of God is bigger than my personal hunger. Are we together now? Many of us, as prayerful as we are, everything centers around us. Not even your family members. Not even your wife, not even your husband. It's none of your business what happens to anybody. Provided I am hot, then I pray. If I am fine, to hell with what is happening in the body. Respectfully speaking, and with all due respect and honor to the body of Christ, even we men of God, we have this spirit. And we have mentored and taught members to walk like that. Whatever is happening to the church is not your business. Provided koinonia is fine. Provided we are growing. Whether a church is being born, whether whatever is happening, that's none of your business. We are fine. Do not make the mistake of Esther. You know you are matured spiritually when you can receive the pain that is in the heart of Jesus. So that you find yourself fasting for three days over an issue that is entirely not your business. God can trust you with the salvation of many. And say, listen, in this family, in seven days, all of them are about to die. This is what Satan has programmed. And there is the spirit that brings salvation over us around the family. There is no intercessor. And he comes to you. Can I trust you for the redemption of this family? And you can wake up in the night. I can't be trusted. Lord, what are we doing? It's none of your business. You just stand. And while you pray, angels come. And you find out that by prophecy, that family should die. Except, listen, don't fear negative prophecy when there is an intercessor. No, 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 no. There are only few prophecies in the Bible that are called written judgments. They can't be changed. A bulk of the things that happen in our lives, it is within the power of the believer to change if you know and understand God's system. Are we together now? So the intercessory ministry is based on two foundations. Let's hurry up. Number one, the law of love. Love for God and love for people. The intercessory ministry is not based on the desire to pray. Uh -uh. The intercessory ministry is not based on the desire to be powerful. No. Love is the genuine biblical foundation for the intercessory ministry. Number two. The second foundation for the intercessory ministry is the principle of shared dominion. The second foundation upon which the intercessory ministry sits on is the principle of shared dominion. Psalms 115 and verse 16. Psalms 115 and verse 16. Hmm. Yeshua ah Yeshua, you see, let me tell you this. The church is an advantage. The church is not a disadvantage to civilization. The house of God is where the mysteries of the kingdom are dispensed. It is where high level spiritual understanding is given to believers. I was glad, he said, when they said unto me, let the house of God is not an interruption to your time. It's an advantage to your destiny. Are we together? 
Behold, I show you a mystery. Please give me that scripture again. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth has he given to the children of men. In theology, we call this the principle of shared dominion. Now, as you know, the church and the believer has been given dominion. But our dominion is not absolute dominion. Our dominion is derived. Are we together now? That means to, we depend on what we were given. God's dominion is absolute dominion. But the dominion of the believer is shared dominion. And here's how God created the system. Please watch this. That the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord's. But the earth he has given to the children of men. Do you know what that means? That means he placed man, according to Genesis 1, 26 to 28. He gave man dominion over the earth and its entirety. That means if God wants to do anything on earth, and if Satan wants to do anything on earth, both God and Satan must add men to the equation of dominion for anything to happen in the earth. God has the power to veto man, but he has limited himself to honor man by saying, man, as far as the earth is concerned, you must become a factor to reckon with if anything will happen in the earth. Do you know why Satan is powerful? Satan is powerful for as long as there is one unsaved person and one ignorant person. This is where Satan derives his strength. The confidence of Satan is based on the fact that he thinks it will be impossible for everybody on earth to be saved and everybody to come into the fullness of the stature. So he knows provided there is one available vessel. A legion was in one person. This is Satan's confidence. He is not moved by the fact that many things are happening. He is threatened but not moved. Because there is still one person he can deceive. There is still one soul he can kill, steal and destroy from. There is a law called the law of territory. That means you are not allowed to be a legitimate functionary within a territory until you are built with the materials of that territory. Are we together now? You cannot go to heaven. You cannot even enter the realm of the spirit with this body. It has to change. That is why when you are having a visionary experience, it's your spirit that accesses that realm. The physical body remains here. When you dream, it's not your body. The body you see there is just the spirit body. Are we together now? Remember, we can leave, but we are not going with this body. Something will happen according to the authority of Scripture. When the trumpet sounds, those who are dead in Christ will rise first. Is that true? Go to the grave and see whether their bodies are there. It's decayed already. So another body would be given to them. Bodies incorruptible. And we who are alive and are kept, we will be changed. Are we together now? Yes. The reason why demons, the reason why spirits cannot function legitimately on earth is because they did not descend to the earth with a body. A body was only made for Adam and his generation. Are you seeing that now? If you know this, you will now, well, we have the mystery of deliverance coming, so let me not hurry up. I will be teaching you a deep mystery, why people go to bed and see these spirits come to molest them. I will teach you what they are looking for, because spirits are genderless. There is no male and female spirit. So what is the appearance of that man that comes to you, or that woman that comes to you? There is a mystery, and there is an explanation. What are they looking for? But let's limit ourselves to what we are discussing now. Are we learning already? The intercessory ministry is based on two foundations. Number one, the law of love. Number two, the principle of shared dominion. 
that means when it has to do with happenings in the earth it is not all up to god and it is not all up to man there is a participatory role that we have to play so don't look at the earth and say if there is a god in heaven this answers the question that people say if there is a god of heaven in heaven why is there killing and raping and maiming people i will tell you that part of the equation came as a result of man's carelessness are we together it is the reason why there are territories today that do not call upon the name of yeshua and yet there is dexterity and order within that territory because they took advantage of the principles of scripture that make for leadership and they replicated heaven within that territory the principle of shared dominion question what power does satan use to destroy man who can answer that question Do you know what power Satan uses? <laughs> Once have I spoken, twice have you heard that all power belongs to the Lord. Do you believe that scripture? Where then does Satan get this power? How come he is so powerful? I will tell you it is not just because he was once a cherub that covereth it is not just because he deceived one third of the angels are we together now in as much as it is true you see one thing with light is that once you have received light light is like dna the memory and the imprint of that light remains with you this is why why should we talk about this now Let's see. now watch this if i am a herbalist god forbid god forbid in the name of jesus i'm saying it on air so that you get it clearly because of the times that we live in listen carefully it's just an example now watch this let's assume that as a young boy i was introduced into traditional practice and they opened my eyes using divination if i get born again that opening will not close again are you getting now what happens is just that the agency that sponsors that activity will change but that advantage remains with you completely <laughs> listen satan was once the light bearer the imprint of that light you see even though he's fallen right now it cannot be undone again like to brainwash the mysteries listen carefully there are three levels of accessing power the highest is power through intimacy relationship are we together now the highest level of spiritual power comes through intimacy the second level comes by accessing the mysteries of the kingdom. There is a dimension of the power of God invested in mysteries. You don't need a relationship for that to work. All you need is understanding and the faith to engage it. This is the kind of power that is used by herbalists and spiritualists. Those who practice divination, what they are teaching them, are things that are largely founded from scripture but empowered by demonic agencies that's why they fast too that's why they do all of these things too whether you are serving god or satan you will still fast is that true because there is something it can do to you remember the prophets of baal and elijah did you not see a similarity of operations between two of them and yet one belonged to baal and one belonged to god and all of them needed altars. All of them needed sacrifices. All of them needed fire to come down. I hope you are we're still together this night. Yes. If you do not understand the principle of shared dominion, the devil will take advantage of your life. And you will sit down and believe everything that is happening to you is the will of God. 
Satan will deceive you into saying, look, if it happens, it's the will of God. Just give thanks. Because you do not understand that the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the sons. Hezekiah would have said, alright, that's okay. I've heard you. Hezekiah said, no way. I'm not ignorant as a king. He turned to the wall and began to negotiate. The law of love and the principle of shared dominion. Now for sake of time, very quickly, there there are there are two basic principles. Listen carefully. There are two basic principles that govern prophetic intercession. Number one, the first principle is you must discern and understand the controlling powers over regions and over territories. You want to become a prophetic intercessor, uh, intercessor you must understand, discern and understand the controlling powers over regions and over territories. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 13. Please look up. There are many people who pray and pray and miss. Prophetic intercession is not just prayer request. These are deeper levels of prayer that work with high level spiritual intelligence. This was Daniel. Remember when the angel came to him, Gabriel now. He was giving him an explanation as to why he came late. He says, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia which stood me one and twenty days but lo michael one of the chief princes came to help me and i remained there with the king of persia what was the king of persia fighting verse 14 now i am come to make thee understand what shall befall who thy people he was not attacking daniel he was attacking salvation that was coming to the people through the revelation that will be given to Daniel. And he discerned the prince of Persia. He kept praying. He set himself to fast and pray for 21 days for the answer to come. Can I tell you this? Please look at me. The Bible does not leave the believer in the dark as to the fact that Satan has an organized demonic structure. This is not teaching or glorifying Satan, but it's the truth from Scripture. It was Paul in his Pauline epistle that opened us up to that spiritual stratification of demonic activities to the end that we be enlightened. Are we together now? Most believers are completely ignorant as to the devices of the enemy. And we just wave it and say, no problem. Jesus has died. That's all right. When they teach you in driving schools, why do they talk to you about accidents and other things? Do they plan to kill you? No. But that awareness is important. Is that true? You ask pilots when they train them, they simulate different scenarios of plane crashes so that they build a management system around it. The goal is not for them to crash, but that that possibility exists in their entire time. And it is better that they are enlightened do not be ignorant, he said, of the devices of the enemy. Satan has devices. And many believers are ignorant. And Satan rides upon our ignorance to begin to cause us a plethora of catastrophes. God is bringing light to us tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. How do you know... The controlling powers over territories. Look at me. You study the controlling powers over territories by looking at the prevalent patterns that are within that territory. You can know the spirits that control territories. And please hear me. If you're a minister of the gospel, hear this and learn this. So that when God sends you to a territory, you don't just go and get a building or build and start. You have to understand what you are confronting. There are territories where you don't find old people there. You get to a certain age range, there is a spirit that cuts you off. 
There are territories where you don't find children. You find very old people, but they renew their lives with children. There are territories where it is the women that feed the men. Once you are within that territory, as a woman, you are the man. And the man is the woman. Born again, tongue talking. But you find out that the men are limited. The house is paid for by the woman. Don't feel bad. I'm not, I'm not trying to look down on you. But it ought not to be so. That is not God's order. Are we together now? There are families where the parents are always greater than the children. You can give birth to eight children. The highest of them will become something you are not proud of saying. No matter how hard working. Have you seen people travel to America after 10, 20 years? They return back like arm robbers. They look like the spirit of the city. There are cities you enter and you can remember everything from when you were a child. Nothing changed. Regardless, and in that city they will tell you the best professor came out from that city. In the best, the IT people, people come out from that city to bless the world and yet the city does not change. There are spirits that keep it. Yes, sir. How about spirits of poverty? You hear that someone was doing well and just came to a city and he starts going down until he looks like the city. You want to become an intercessor? Yes. This also applies to families. There are families where things don't work. Please don't, I hope you understand what I'm teaching you now. Yes. Father was educated and serious. Mother was educated and serious. All the children graduates, grandchildren graduates. And yet nobody can have a decent job. The most successful person, the longest person who worked there, worked only three years. Go and read your Bible. Now, I hope you understand what I'm teaching you. Now, I'm not trying to get you emotional. If I mention a case that relates to yours, I hope you understand that I'm just teaching generally. Do we understand now? There are families, for instance, where the greatest people who represent the strength of that family always die. The moment someone gets a job with NMPC and he says, glory be to God, he dies. So you find a territory with weak people. All the people that have the strength to bring deliverance. There is a spirit that comes to cut them short. You are not an intercessor if you do not understand the burden of the territory. What are you praying over? You don't just, listen, an intercessor does not say, God, give people jobs. Oh, God, give people children. That's a child's prayer. You come to the root of the problem. The controlling powers. Many years ago, you've heard it in my teachings, many years ago, I went to preach somewhere in northern Nigeria. It was a crusade. A can crusade, I think, or, or something of that sort. And through God is my witness. I saw several, something was happening to the women. Now, I'm not a medical doctor. But every time they gave birth, they became deaf and dumb. Immediately. Not one, not two, not eight, not ten. I said, I, well, I'm not a doctor, but at least I have, I did biology enough to know that this is, what is the relationship between giving birth and becoming deaf and dumb? Once you see a prevalent pattern, it is not sickness, it is a spirit. Are we together? There are family members where children of 12 years have high blood pressure. What is the child thinking about? You really think that's a disease? No. 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 Even medical science tells us sometimes they trace certain sicknesses and they'll say, does your father have it? Does your mother have it? In the name of Jesus, let me speak over someone. Any pattern that will not allow your family to represent the purposes of God, I call upon the God of my covenant. This night, it lives your life forever. Please sit down. I have seen patterns of poverty over families. There are territories where the preachers never break through. 
anointed, they love God sincerely. Some of the, the holiest, godliest men. And yet the territory does not open. After 10 years, 40 members, it declines to 30. During Thanksgiving, it goes to 80. And you see the people saying, God, did you send me? If only they understood that there are veils and there are gates over territories. Listen to what I'm telling you. There are controlling powers over territories. There are controlling powers over regions. There are controlling powers over families. Don't you think the devil will just fold his arms and watch you and your children just go like that? There is a pharaoh that will fight your exodus. It takes spiritual intelligence to define your possibilities. Patterns of bad luck, patterns of ill health, patterns of widespread barrenness, mother barren, gave birth only after 10 years, brothers barren, sister barren, is a demonic thing. There are patterns where things that are started never finish. Have you seen those kinds of things? You will see a house, they will tell you they started building this house in 1987. Until now, what is in a house that cannot be built? You will hear that the person who had money and came to build it died there. Have you seen those things? Don't be afraid of what I'm teaching you. It's the truth. You stand upon a territory. Jesus looked over Jerusalem and began to cry. Why was he crying? He saw that there was a spirit that casted blindness on the people. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he said, if thou had known even in this thy time the things that pertain unto your peace, but they are hidden from you. The widow at Nain, there, is a, there was a pattern that kills all the men in her life. Her husband died. Her only child was about to die. And the intercessor came and said, No, we have to change something here. God is raising many of you right now. Because there, there are age-long, some of them, centuries-old problems in your area. And your grandfathers tried to do the best. Help them, please. They tried to do the best that they could do. My God, I sense such an anointing. Such an anointing. Such an anointing. Just help those under the anointing. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Will you blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow every sadness, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Hear me. There are territories that have patterns. Where those who work for things never enjoy it. Have you seen that pattern? You labor. There are people who have raised others. There are people in Nigeria. Almost every great name they participated in their rising. And yet there is nothing for you. It's a spirit. It's a pattern. They sit over territories. Skate bakatos sande patalakatos embrekete katos koti barakata skada batakatos kete kata embrekete katos koto pakata kebas kebas ketalis kenya embrekete katos kati balakata.
Hadakata Bakata Katos, Empreteke Parakatos Katikata, Kebrentes Keti Lakatos Katiada, Kaparis Katia, just bring the spirit in one minute. Sanakata Bakatos Koto Brendekata, Kilates Kenimatos Koto Brandikatia. I sought for a man who would stand in the gap that I would not destroy them. Hallelujah. Let me finish because we are going to pray tonight. Worship him. Get ready. You will sing that my song for me again. Ah, my spirit is fired up. Listen. You have to say enough is enough. If not for your sake, for your children on board. I've gone through the pain already. Let innocent people not go through this again. I've gone through the poverty. I went through the pain of idolatry. I went through the pain of polygamy. I went through the pain of delay. Go through it for their sake. That is the character of an intercessor. Shakata Bakatos. Kebrente ketes koto baskatia. Embreketa. Rekete koto skoto ketea. Rebas koto shanakata miyakata. Someone pray. You are engaging the spirit for the sake of those connected to you. Shadakata Bakatos, Eprokotos Koto Begete Lakapa. Listen to me. Hear me. Please listen to me. I'm teaching you the principles of prophetic intercession. There are families where the children will always bring shame to the parents, no matter the investment. It's not that they are bad. They find themselves going to fish trouble and return back with shame. You send them to go for studies, they return with shame. Wasting your money and your time. Remember what I taught you. He continued further. If and when unhindered, evil will always continue further. Hear me. Let me tell you this. I made up my mind and I made a covenant with God that everything I've suffered in my life, it ends with me. My children will never, whether spiritual or physical, they will never. This is the character of an intercessor. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. Send prayer investments. Let it end with me. Let it end with me. The poverty, the failure, the limitation. Let it end here. Thus far have you come. No further shall you go. Pray. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Please sit down. Just help those under the anointing. Now hear me please. Don't be distracted. We are praying. I want you right now as you are seated in one minute study the patterns you have seen in your family just think about it honestly study the patterns you have seen from the region you come from there are regions that have the spirit of anger there are regions that have the spirit of disunity there are regions that have the spirit of irresponsibility it's the women that serve the men there are regions that have helped them, please. Kabashka Nikatosia. Widespread laziness. I 
can see with the eyes of the Spirit. And I see a mighty army rising. Yes, I know they're rising in the thousands, coming from afar. Coming from afar, hey. oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 Hear me. Please listen carefully. Listen. It was from Zaria that the Lord sent me here. There is a spirit over that region. You start a walk, it does not last more than three years. Something must happen that brings you down. You may still be there, but you never maintain the texture of your glory. There are regions like that. I sought for a man who would stand in the gap. Woe betides a family with no intercessor. Woe betides a business with no intercessor. Don't you think because it's business you don't intercede? Woe betides a ministry that has sounds and mics and has beautiful skilled people but without intercessors. Woe betides a preacher without personal intercessors no matter how anointed you are in this end times if there are no men who can hold on the altar for you you may not last i tell you the evil of the times will eat you up to your shame and surprise Please sit down. Controlling powers. I've shared with you my vision that I was praying some years ago when the ceiling in my room just disappeared and I'm seeing this spirit and this being looking at me, looking like Leviathan, looking like, like, like a dinosaur with a tail that had its own life the eyes were as big as a human eye and he says so you think you can bring God's people into abundance and I saw that spirit there are horns that stop the voices of men from rising to the nations there are many anointed people in this nation there are many gifted people in many families but there are spirits sitting on their glory. Number one, please sit. Please sit. Discernment and the understanding of the controlling powers the primary explanation to territorial backwardness is not the blindness of the people human beings are god's creation they are not that dull only god would open your eyes to see the territories assigned over nigeria don't you think nigeria is just sitting free of attacks Go and see the powers that reside in the sea. The powers that manipulate the elements of nature. A ministry like this. You think the devil would just fold his arms and watch? No, sir. But we look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever.
for Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Oh, I didn't see Reverend Vindio Lu. God bless you, sir. Such an honor to have you and your team. Thank you so much. Sincerely celebrate and appreciate you. Listen to me. Let me finish what I'm doing and would we'll dedicate some time. You are not praying this night for yourself. Do you know that in the peace of a territory is your peace? In the peace of your family is your peace. God is betting spiritual midwives tonight who will hold on the four horns of the altar and cry until something breaks open. So the principle... Of prophetic intercession number one the fortitude to discern the controlling powers Jesus knew this when Jesus was going to Gadara he was not just sleeping he was resting but in discernment the spirits that possess the gatherings notice that in Gadara some people were doing well whereas some people were suffering it was based on their negotiation with the spirits. Can I tell you, there are controlling powers that sit over cities. You don't do business and prosper until you come to them. You can do a general small business, but you are about to hit a threshold. They will invite you. Come, sit. We don't just rise like that. Ask Jesus. When Jesus was about to start his mission, Satan took him into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the glories of the world and said all has been given to me unfortunately satan is not the only jesus is not the only person satan has taken to that mountain there are many people preachers have gone to that mountain businessmen have gone to that mountain and some did not say no can i tell you this Go and ask any truly successful person who is successful at a global scale. They will tell you that a time must come when envoys who represent the workings of darkness, they invite you to a council. It is based on negotiation, not intelligence from that level. As a preacher and as a man of God, it's like there is a spiritual meter that measures your impact. You keep rising, provided you are just generally doing your thing. Help that lady. I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise to a particular point of influence. Here they come to you. Your father tried this. Are you aware? Influence does not just happen because you have what to say. It is victory over controlling powers. The king of Tyre sits upon the economic hub of the earth. How dare you prosper without compromise? Without coming to him? This is why Jesus said, What shall it profit a man? If he gains and loses, my question, who was the businessman? That did business with him that you gave your soul there are musicians who were taking up that mountain they freely gave their soul for fame can I tell you this this she goddess Babylon that sits upon the circles of the earth is interested in everything including the souls of men let me show you a scripture Revelations 18 we're about to pray Revelations 18. This is the fall of Babylon. Let's start from verse 1. We'll read from verse 1 to 5. 
and then we'll go to verse 9 and end with 13. Please pay attention. Everyone, please look and learn. After these things, I saw another angel come out from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. To five. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become a habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Verse 3. I want you to read this by yourself. Are you ready? One to read. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Who is the her? Babylon. And the merchants of the earth, how did they get rich? Read it. Her works rich through the abundance of her delicacies. They did not just prosper. There was a negotiation that happened. Verse 4. I heard another voice in heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. Go to verse 9. Go to verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, that great city, Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep. Why will they weep? For no man buyeth their merchandise. So why were they buying their merchandise before? It was not because they could buy and sell. There was a spirit that they negotiated with over the territory. Verse 12. Now listen. Let me show you what this system sells. All these things are available for purchase. The controlling powers. I will tell you the assignment of controlling powers. They ensure transgenerational allegiance to Satan. They control everything, the systems and the structures to make sure you cannot rise by righteousness. You negotiate with them, they give you access. The merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple and silk, scarlet, thyine wood, and all manner of vessels of ivory. These are the things she sells. And all manner of vessels of most precious wood. You know the Bible says, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and does what? That means, if Babylon gives you the world, what does she collect? I will show you what she does with those souls. Verse 13. Let's read. Cinnamon. Orders, ointments, hold on. Babylon can give you anointing. She sells it too. You can go and say, I'm tired of ministry not working. Let's negotiate. This territory cannot be that difficult. And she says, I will give you anointing. Frankincense and wine and oil, fine flour and wheat. And beast. Now you start reading. Sheep. Horses. What else? What does she sell again? Where did she get the souls? The people who came to her for exchange. Babylon has souls. Babylon has slaves. She can give you access to the hearts of men. So that whether you sing anything, no matter how nice it is. A million people can love you in one day. Those souls come from her. It does not just happen, dear people of God. Why does the devil assign these spirits in territories? To make sure no territory is ever saved as a territory. If he tries your individual salvation and it does not work, he can give up. But he's waiting for you at a territorial level. Satan is obsessed with transgenerational allegiance. Your forefathers worshipped him through mediums. 
grandfathers worshipped him through mediums and someone suddenly arises and says no more we will rise in your name Adonai may you reign on high we will rise Sing your name, Adonai. Here comes a generation that says we will not bow to Babylon. 